Good morning from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at Mission Control Houston, where we begin our coverage today of a planned six-hour spacewalk by two Russian cosmonauts, the first spacewalk ever staged out of the Poisk module airlock 
on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the orbital outpost. At this hour, Roscosmos cosmonaut Sergei Ryzhikov, the Expedition 64 commander, and flight engineer Sergei Kudsverchkov are suited up in the Poisk airlock in their Russian Orlan spacesuits, ready to exit into the vacuum of space to conduct the 230-second spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Here at Mission Control in Houston, the Orbit 2 team of flight controllers is on duty. Led by Flight Director Greg Whitney, they'll be on console throughout the course of the day today. He is joined here in the white flight control room by Space Station Communicator, or CAPCOM, Travis Fitzgerald, who will be talking to the rest of the Expedition 64 crew inside the space station as required throughout the course of the day. Across the ocean on the outskirts of Moscow in the town of Korolyov, Russian flight controllers are on station at their consoles in the Russian Mission Control Center, where they have worked throughout the morning and monitoring Ryzhikov and Kudsverchkov as they suited up for today's excursion with the assistance of NASA flight engineer Kate Rubens. The two spacewalkers today, Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov, both making their first spacewalks of their career. Ryzhikov, the Expedition 64 commander, will be wearing the Orlon suit with the red stripes. For this, the first spacewalk of his career, he is designated as extravehicular crew member one or EV-1. Could Sverchkov also making the first spacewalk of his career, and as extravehicular crew member two, or EV-2, he'll be wearing the Orlon suit, bearing the blue stripes. The uh, two cosmonauts will also have the benefit of wearing helmet cameras uh, on their uh, suits uh, so that we can get a bird's eye view looking down uh, at uh, the work that they'll be doing as they clamber about uh, the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Uh, Ryzhikov's helmet camera number that you'll see in a ghostly figure on the lower right-hand side of your screen when that uh, helmet camera view is available will be number 20. Could Sverchkov's helmet camera is number 18. The two cosmonauts have spent the better part of the past two weeks preparing their suits for today's spacewalk, along with the tools they're taking outside with them, and they've reviewed all of their procedures and timeline for all of today's activities. Again, uh, this spacewalk, the 232nd spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance and upgrades, is the eighth spacewalk outside the station this year. Again, noteworthy, since this is the first spacewalk to be conducted out of the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the complex. It is a full house at the International Space Station, thanks to the uh, arrival late Monday night of the crew of resilience, the Crew Dragon, that launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on Sunday evening, arriving some 27 and a half hours later for an automated docking at the forward end of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. From left to right is Kate Rubens, who arrived uh, along uh, with her two Russian cosmonaut crewmates on a Soyuz spacecraft a month ago, back on October 14th. Uh, to her uh, right on this uh, crew portrait is Crew Dragon and Resilience Pilot Victor Glover, Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency uh, Flight Engineer Soichi Noguchi, uh, Sergei Ryzhikov, the station commander, who is uh, getting ready to uh, conduct his spacewalk today. Uh, Mike Hopkins, the commander of Resilience that arrived at the station late Monday night. Shannon Walker, uh, mission specialist aboard Resilience. And on the far right is Sergei Kud Sverchkov, who will be exiting shortly along with uh, Ryzhikov for today's spacewalk. And, uh Please continue on my go. Copy. We're switching to sheet two, correct? At this hour, uh, suited up inside the uh, Poisk airlock, uh, both Ryzhikov and Kudsverchkov will be starting to pre-breathe pure oxygen to uh, purge uh, their bloodstreams of any nitrogen that may exist and prevent uh, any condition uh, known as decompression sickness or the bends as they step out into the vacuum of space. 
The spacewalk uh, that is uh, scheduled to begin uh, about an hour from now actually winds up uh, with a series of procedures to uh, ensure that the uh, initial use of this Poisk airlock uh, will be uh, good to go from a technical standpoint. That uh, will uh, result in the uh, closing of the hatch uh, to uh, between the Poisk airlock and the International S uh, Space Station's Zvezda module by Kate Rubens. Then uh, Ryzhikov and Kudsverchkov will depressurize the Poisk module to 550 millimeters of mercury. Uh, they will uh, conduct a leak check at that point to make sure that the seals around that hatch uh, have good integrity uh, before uh, they uh, continue their pre-breathing procedures. They will then uh, conduct a second leak check uh, on the station side uh, of the uh, interface between the Poisk and the International Space Station. So Kate Rubens and the two cosmonauts on both sides of that uh, airlock interface will be conducting leak checks to make sure Poisk uh, is good to go for uh, the future operations in support of spacewalking activities at the International Space Station. Once those leak checks are performed, uh, the Poisk will be uh, depressurized down to vacuum and the two cosmonauts will open up the hatch uh, to the Poisk airlock, exposing themselves to the vacuum of space. They'll conduct a visual inspection of the hatch seals to make sure that there's no uh, foreign object debris or nothing uh, out of the ordinary with those hatch seals. They'll close the hatch a second time uh, and will do a partial repressurization of Poisk to 260 millimeters of mercury uh, in a final uh, series of leak checks to make sure that we have good integrity on that brand new airlocks hatch. Following a uh, successful leak check, they'll depressurize Poisk back down to vacuum one final time, open up the hatch for a second time, and resume uh, their remaining spacewalking tasks. First, uh, Kud Sverchkov will float outside, followed by Ryzhikov, uh, and we'll be showing you all of those tasks in just a moment. Today's spacewalk actually scratches the surface uh, of an intricate plan to decommission the venerable Piers docking compartment prior to its departure from the space station next year that will clear the way for the launch of the Nyoka multipurpose laboratory module on a proton rocket and its docking to the same port Piers has occupied since September of 2001. One of the tasks Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov will perform today will be to move a telemetry cable from Piers to Poisk as work gets underway to set the stage for the end of Piers, which has served as both a docking port and an airlock for Russian spacewalks. The Poisk module, which was launched to the International Space Station back on November 10, 2009, nine years after the Piers docking compartment was launched, will now serve uh, as well as a docking port and as an airlock for Russian spacewalks until that multipurpose laboratory module arrives at the International Space Station, which will give uh, the Russians uh, a couple of airlocks from which to perform spacewalks in the future. And there are a passel of space walks that lie ahead for the uh, integration and activation of the multipurpose laboratory module once it arrives on that uh, on a uh, proton rocket uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome next year. And the reading is 0.18 and 0.4. Copy. That's what we see on the display. And the difference is 4, EV2, 0.31, EV1, 0.32, copy. The work uh, to be done outside today by Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, entails a variety of different tasks. Again, uh, the primary task is uh, to begin and uh, the very uh, laborious process of decommissioning the Piers docking compartment. But uh, we have an animated uh, overview of that spacewalk now uh, that uh, we can provide that will show you all of the elements to be conducted by the two cosmonauts today during Russian spacewalk number 47. Russian EVA 47 will be conducted by Sergei Ryzhikov as EV-1 in the red striped suit and Sergei Kuzverchkov as EV-2 in the blue striped suit. Mini Research Module 2, or MRM-2, will be the first time used as a Russian airlock, replacing Docking Compartment 1, or DC-1. The new EVA hatches 
seals will be checked out before the crew egresses MRM2. EV2 will egress first, and EV1 will hand out the new FGB flow control regulator panel 1 in its airtight container. Then EV1 will egress MRM2. The two will translate to the FGB and install the airtight container on the FGB frame. The two will then remove the MLI on the FGB panel. The two will work together and remove the failed flow control regulator and temp stow it out of the way. Then the two will open up the airtight container, take out the new flow control regulator, and install the new flow control regulator panel one. MLI will be opened on the new flow control regulator and the connectors will be retrieved. The connectors will then be mated to FGB. Photos will be taken and all MLI will be closed. The two will then stow the old flow control regulator panel one into the airtight container and close the door. They will release the airtight container from the FGB and translate to MRM2 and stow the airtight container inside MRM2. Then they will retrieve the window cleaning tool. The two will then translate to the MRM2 Transit B cable and remove it. They will then route Transit B and connect it to the SM patch panel. The crew will then translate to DC1 and remove the SNP407 type connector experiment from the DC1 handrail. Then they will translate over to the service module, window number eight, and clean it. The crew will then translate up Strela Boom to the MRM2 and redirect the Bakada O or the Plume Impingement and Deposit Monitoring Unit. Then the crew will translate over to the MRM2 hatch and egress. This will conclude Russian EVA 47. EV2. And uh, as you heard uh, during uh, that narrated animation, it is the disconnection of the so-called Transit B antenna feeder uh, that is at the interface of the Piers docking compartment of the Zvezda service module and its reconnection to the interface uh, to the Poisk module that uh, technically begins uh, all of the work associated with uh, transferring uh, spacewalk airlock tasks from Piers, which has been used uh, since its launch in September of 2001 for Russian-based spacewalks to the Poisk airlock, which is being employed for the first time today. And please um, place the uh, hatch handle nearby. Copy. Okay, uh, so, please put the hatch tool uh, in the pocket nearby. Yes, I will do that. It will be in the pocket next to the hatch. Copy. Uh, right now, if I understand it correctly, you have a standard display. Leak check and, uh, While uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov are uh, continuing preparations inside the Poisk airlock for their spacewalk today. Aboard uh, the Crew Dragon Resilience, uh, you see Shannon Walker at the bottom of your screen, uh, joined uh, by uh, Suichi Noguchi uh, as, he, as they uh, work to transfer equipment that was brought to the International Space Station aboard Crew Dragon. Uh, the, uh, the work uh, that they have been involved in is uh, the transferring of equipment and cargo that was uh, launched aboard uh, the Crew Dragon atop a Falcon 9 rocket by SpaceX on Sunday night from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Uh, they are uh, seven uh, crew members strong now aboard the International Space Station, all part of the Expedition 64 crew, and will be dropping in to take a look at uh, their work from time to time throughout the course of the day. There's another view of uh, Japanese astronaut Suichi Noguchi, the third 
human to have flown on three different spacecraft uh, during a uh, spaceflight career, following in the footsteps of Wally Shara and John Young. Uh, Noguchi uh, returning to the International Space Station for his second long-duration mission and his third mission to the station overall. It is in depressed position. Depressed is confirmed. Copy, and when, while uh, the pressure is decreasing, please switch to uh, cue card 4, step 6, uh, depressed to depressed. Oh, all right. Cue card 4, step 6. You card four, step six. I'm ready. And what is the uh, current uh, depressed pressure in your system? 0 0.02 for EV1. 0 0.01 for EV2 copy. And what is the uh, current MVAP pressure gauge reading in MRM2? It is 742. 742. Copy. Well, 747. No. Okay, copy. And your goal is to start the depress. Please open KSBSO, start up the timer. And when the pressure reaches 550 on MVAP, please close KSBSO valve. Uh, and stand by for LED to um, go, go off. And please uh, monitor the uh, pressure decrease. Copy. And your goal to open KSDSO depressed valve. It's in work. Copy. With the uh, hatch closed between the Poisk module and the Zvezda service module, Rizhikov and Kudsverchkov uh, will uh, open up a valve uh, to begin the depressurization of Poisk down to 550 millimeters of mercury, the initial step in a multi-step process uh, to test the integrity of the Poisk module and its seals. Pressure reading is 650, 650, 50. This is in that pressure reading. Copy, stand by for uh, 550 reading. Copy, 610. Copy, 600, 590. Copy, good. 570. Copy, 550 closing KSD depressed valve. Copy. Because the depressed valve is closed and the uh, pressure reading is, LED is not eliminated, the current pressure is 554 millimeters. All right, and please start, start the 10 minute timer for uh, pressure stabilization uh, in MRM2 copy. 1349. And uh, the, the suit should be in the Depressed and pressure. It, it and uh, the first phase of this depressurization is now stopped at about 550 millimeters of mercury. The two cosmonauts uh, inside Poisk and Kate Rubens on the station side of that uh, interface between Poisk and Zvezda will uh, perform leak checks to make sure that uh, we have an airtight seal to the new airlock that is being employed for the first time today. Rubens uh, and her uh, new ar arrival uh, crewmates uh, from Resilience are free to move about uh, between the Russian and U.S. segments of the station. The hatch is closed to the aft portion of the Zvezda service module, uh, per the flight rules. But since Kate Rubens' Soyuz vehicle, the MS-17, 
is located on the Rosviet module port on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment. She is free to move about the cabin throughout the course of today's spacewalk. All right, copy. We're standing by then. Uh, into, uh, the, what is the position of the temperature control handle? It is in position one and four. The uh, and for EV2, it is in position 3 copy, and uh, how does it feel? Is it cool enough, comfortable? Uh, yes, uh, it is. Okay. The International Space Station and its seven crew members flying from southwest to northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator at an altitude of 260 statute miles, passing uh, just to the northwest of the capital of Somalia, Mogadishu. And because of the foam that's on the side of the mega HEPA filter itself, the seal doesn't doesn't fit properly, and so it's, it's kind of bowed in the middle. I don't know if that's going to be good enough or not. Okay, we copy. We're checking. That is Shannon Walker uh, aboard the Crew Dragon Resilience, again uh, referencing uh, the transfer of cargo from Resilience into the International Space Station. Uh, that is occupying most of the uh, Dragon crew's time today as uh, they uh, continue on with other work uh, parallel to the spacewalk uh, that is scheduled to begin uh, with the uh, opening of the hatch to the Poisk module a short time from now. Is it okay? Uh, yes, I guess it's uh, off a bit. It's, it keeps increasing, but does not exceed 30. Uh, Sergey, what is the current MRM2 uh, pressure reading? It decreased a bit. Currently, it is 575. 575, uh, that's okay. Coffee. And please proceed with pressure stabilization. Copy. Rizhikov and Kudzferchkov continue to monitor pressure inside the Poisk module. They are testing uh, the integrity of uh, the seals on uh, the Poisk airlock, which is being employed for the first time today for a Russian spacewalk.
Once uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, complete uh, this uh, preliminary set of leak checks at the uh, Poisk module and open up the hatch, a Russian spacewalk, uh, its duration is measured from hatch open to hatch close. So once the hatch is open, the clock will start on what is known as PET or phased elapsed time for the duration of the spacewalk until hatch close. Now, they will be closing the hatch here, uh, again, as part of the leak uh, checks associated with the first use of this Poisk airlock, but that will not stop the clock today. The clock will run from initial hatch opening uh, to the void of space until hatch closure at the end of today's planned six-hour spacewalk. A U.S. spacewalk out of the Quest airlock is measured in phased elapsed time from uh, the time that astronauts put their suits on internal battery power until they're back inside the airlock and begin to repressurize Quest. Two minutes left uh, before the end of the 10 minutes stabilization. The current pressure is 557, 557, so it, the, the tendency to rise uh, has lowered a little bit. Copy. That's good. The good news. That report from uh, Sergei Ryzhikov indicating uh, that pressure inside Poisk in it, this initial uh, partial depressurization of the airlock is holding steady. That's good. Ten minutes is over. I'm ready to start five-minute timer. Okay, ten minutes of stabilization has passed. So MRM2 pressure, uh, could you please report it? MRM2 757. Oh, so, sorry, five, 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 seven, seven. Correction, five, seven, seven. Okay. Сергей, давай еще раз уточним. Сергей. Okay, five, seven, five or five, seven, seven, Сергей. Five, seven, seven, Moscow. Five seven seven. Okay, so now start the timer for the leak check for five minutes in work. Okay, so PHO SU MRM two leak check timer five minute timer has started. Okay, copy. So the pressure is stable. The timer has started. Copy. Uh, this is uh, Kate. I copy the pressure. Kate Rubens uh, monitoring. Uh the uh, pressure integrity of Poisk from the station side of the docking interface between the Poisk module and the Zvezda service module. If you uh, recall the configuration, uh, Poisk is on the space-facing side or the zenith side of the Russian segment. Piers uh, docking compartment, uh, which has been used exclusively uh, for Russian spacewalks since its arrival back in September 2001, is on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment. Sergei, both EVAs 1 and 2, this is medical support team. Could you please report uh, how do you feel, how you feel? EV1 feels great, EV2 feels good. Copy. Thank you so much, guys.
One other uh, noteworthy uh, st statistic, uh, an anniversary coming up. Today's work uh, on the Zarya module by Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov to replace uh, the hardware associated with a fluid flow panel that regulates uh, the uh, plumbing, uh, the flow of uh, liquids uh, through the plumbing of the uh, Zarya module of the International Space Station comes two days shy, today's spacewalk, two days shy of the 22nd anniversary of the launch of Zarya as the first element of the International Space Station atop a proton rocket on November 20th, 1998, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. 577 is the pressure. Copy, 577, please continue monitoring two more minutes. Uh, it's a firm, continue monitoring. Once again, if you're just joining us, Sergei Ryzhikov, uh, the Expedition 64 commander and flight engineer Sergei Kud Sverchkov, inside the Poisk module, hatch is closed. They're suited up in their respective Russian Orlan spacesuits, having conducted a partial depressurization of the airlock in a preliminary check of the integrity of the seals on that airlock that is being used for the first time today uh, for uh, support of a Russian spacewalk. Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov will open up the hatch to Poisk a short time from now and then close the hatch back uh, on uh, Poisk and do a partial repressurization of the airlock in a test of the seals. Uh, they'll also do an inspection of those seals to make sure they're pristine uh, before they open up the hatch uh, for a final time and float outside to begin today's work. Moscow station, up to five minutes uh, monitoring. The pressure is stable, 577, delta is zero. Okay, copy that. So delta P is zero, MRM2, 577, pressure. We copy that, and now on my go, you will proceed uh, with your actions as per the procedure copy. So the hatches are not leaking, so Kate, you can go to PGO and close the hatch PGO as to SM, and we'll be standing by for your report on the hatch closure. Okay, I will do that. Moscow. So uh, am I taking inaudible uh, with me to FGB? Yes, you are going to PGO and close PGO SU SM hatch, and we'll be standing by for your report on that, Kate. All right. I will do that, and I will transition to PGO. Copy. EV1 and EV2. So uh, you are going to uh, the next page of cue card 5, sheet 1, step 8, Orlan Purge, start of free breeze. So far, so good. Uh, good integrity on the uh, hatch seals to the Poisk module. Kate Rubens will complete uh, the closure of a series of hatches at the docking interface between Poisk and the Zvezda service module before she uh, makes her way back uh, toward the Zarya module in the U.S. segment of the station. Meanwhile, uh, that will set the stage for Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov to continue breathing pure oxygen to purge the nitrogen out of their bloodstreams 
and prevent any condition uh, known as the bends or decompression sickness from occurring once they do step outside a short time from now. This is Kate. I am in PGO. How do you copy me, Moscow? EV1 copies you. Well, the, uh, EV2 also copies you. And we are in Moscow standing by for the hedge closure. I am closing the hedge. As soon as I'm done, I will report it. Copy, Kate. EV1, EV2, you can start working step 8 or Lanford, start of free breeze. It's Q card number 5. Copy, Q, num Q card number 5 is ready. Uh, sounds good. At the completion of uh, pre breathing, once uh, the nitrogen has been purged from their bloodstreams, Ryzhikov and Kudzferchkov will complete uh, the initial depressurization of Poisk down to vacuum and open up the uh, poise catch to inspect uh, the hatch seals uh, once that hatch has been opened. They will then close the hatch back up and do a partial repressurization to about 260 millimeters of mercury uh, in one final check of the integrity of those seals. So the, you can see the timer there and uh, it will be incrementing and uh, also the, the pressure in uh, for EV1 is 005 and the same for EV2. Copy. Now during five minutes uh, you will stand by uh, looking at the timer incrementing and, and uh, we will have to get not less than 250 atmospheres at the end of it all. So EV1 has 89, EV2 has 90 reading now. Copy. Okay, so uh, the purge is, con is going on. Copy. Everything going very smoothly uh, with this uh, check of the integrity of the Poisk module seals uh, in this initial depressurization, repressurization exercise uh, to uh, validate uh, Poisk uh, for use as an airlock for Russian spacewalks, the first of which uh, will be occurring imminently as Rizhikov and Kudzferchkov continue pre-breathing pure oxygen. is Close. Copy your report. Kate, the go is to assume hatch is closed. Uh, good news. Thank you, Kate. Kate Rubens, uh, of course, launched with uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov on the Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome back on October 14th. Sergey, once all, uh, when the, is the timer now? Two minutes are left. 242 is the reading of the timer. They are beginning uh, their sixth week on board the International Space Station and, of course, uh, have been joined by the four crew members of the Crew Dragon Resilience who arrived at the space station late Monday night. A seven-person crew now on board for uh, the next six months. Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kud Sverchkov will return home in April as uh, the uh, resilience crew then uh, will be joined by both the Russian crews on a Soyuz vehicle and the next Crew Dragon crew, the Crew 2 crew, uh, that will be commanded by NASA astronaut Shane Kimbrough.
Once again, uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, soon to begin the first spacewalk of their respective careers. Uh, Rizhikov uh, now flying for the second time in space. This is Kud Sverchkov's first flight into space. Again, the 232nd spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance and upgrades, and the eighth spacewalk out of the International Space Station in 2020. Rizhikov uh, will be wearing the suit bearing the red stripes, helmet camera number 20, that you'll see in a uh, ghostly figure on the lower right-hand side of your screen once uh, the two cosmonauts are outside of the Poisk module. Kud Sverchkov will be wearing uh, the suit bearing the blue stripes as EV-2, our extravehicular crew member number two. His helmet camera number will be 18. <laughs> PSS Delta is 415 for EV-1 and 415 for EV-2. Okay. Now, please transfer BSS into the pre-breathe pre uh, position and stand by for the message purge normal. Copy. So now we have this message purge normal for EV1 and the same for EV2. Now you have to see, you will see the pre-breathe screen right now and the timer uh, will be incrementing in the corner of the screen. And the time of the pre-breathe start 14.013. Of 14.13. Copy that. And what about the pressure in the spacesuit, guys? 007 for EV1, 007 for EV2 is the spacesuit pressure. Copy. Thank you. Now you will start working the next step on my go. Copy. You can start working, step 9, a pressure equalization in MRM2 and PHO, between MRM2 and PHO, page 9, cue card number 5. This is cue card 5, sheet 2, step 9. Pressure equalization between MRM2 and uh, PHO. Okay, copy. Q card 5, sheet 2, step 9, copy. You can start performing step 9. Sergei. Copy. So I'm transitioning to repress uh, until zero one, and then uh, the pre-breathe uh, airlock. Yes, uh, it's a go. You can start. So the, I have re uh, press press in on BSS. So the pressure is decreasing, so zero one on the star. This is uh, the repressurization of Poisk uh, to enable Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov to complete uh, the pre-breathe of pure oxygen, uh, cleansing any nitrogen uh, that is uh, residually residing uh, in their bloodstreams. Uh, the they then uh, will uh, conduct a depressurization to vacuum of the Poisk airlock uh, before opening up the hatch for the first of two hatch openings, all part of this uh, preliminary check of Poisk and validating its capability to support uh, today's spacewalk. And um, I'm proceeding. So the Depeho SU is open. So the Depeho SU is open. The pressure is decreasing slowly, um, but it is increasing on MV. So it is 630. And what about the uh, pressure in the space suit? The current one is 012 for EV2. It is 6.45 in MRM2, the current pressure in MRM2, 
This is a view from an external camera on the International Space Station showing the Poisk airlock, uh, the module itself, which uh, has to this point uh, served as a docking port for arriving Russian Soyuz vehicles. First launched uh, on November 10th, 2009, and installed uh, two days later upon its arrival at the station, today to be used for the first time as an airlock in support of Russian spacewalks. MRM2, MV pressure is 755, and uh, uh, the tendency to increase. Kate, what about PHO pressure, tunnel pressure? Kate, Moscow. 658 is the pressure in PHO. Copy PHO 658. So what is the space suit pressure, Sergei? 01 for the one for the uh, ev1 and 02 for the ev2 copy you can proceed to the next cue uh, card number five sheet three uh, step 10 mrm2 per hour depressed to 550 millimeters copy so kate also copy EV1, when you are ready, uh, please give a running commentary. Okay, step 10. Q card 5. Sheet 3. We will open KSDSO, bleed to 550 millimeters, uh, controlling the time, and then I will close the SO valve. Yes, that's right. It's so open as the SO when the pressure is 550. Close the valve as the SO. Copy. KSDSO valve is open. The, I have LED. The timer uh, is, has started. The current pressure is 730, so 720, uh, 630, 620. Now it is 600 even. Copy, Sergei. 580 now is the pressure reading. 570, 560. Copy. 5. Five, five, I'm closing as the valve. The as the is closed, the pressure starts increasing again. It is 560, the current pressure reading. Copy. 65 now. Uh, please monitor it on the timer. 45 seconds. That sounds good. And, and send the command to close KVD PHO S2. After the command goes through, uh, you will have to inhibit uh, this command. Okay, copy. I'm sending the command to close KVD equalization valve PHO S2. 1420 is the time. The LED is not illuminated. I'm sending the inhibit. The inhibit is sent. Permission. Uh, is not uh, illuminated now. The MRM2 pressure is 580. Kate, we are standing by for the uh, pressure stabilization now. Five minutes. Okay, copy. This is Kate. What is PHO pressure when, uh, you know, it all started? Okay, the current pressure is uh, 695. Uh, Sergey, on, on the ATU, could you please release the transmission button? Copy. Will you reach uh, Sergey to? Yeah, I will try. Так, передача, да? 
the transmission yes that's right what about uh, line two i i should leave it yes leave it as is it is the left one yes left lower one can you reach it let me try this is ev1 Guys, don't rush. You know, the stabilization needs to be for five minutes, so there is no hurry at all. So we did not hear each other when it was released. Now we pressed it again, the transmission button. Sergey, so could you please repeat? We, there was a dropout. We did not hear. So what happened? When we released the transmission button, the connection, the communication between EV1 and 2 uh, disappeared. So as soon as we pressed it, uh, we started hearing each other again. So you pressed it again. Yes, that's right. Copy. Okay, so let's leave this configuration for now. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, a view of the uh, Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station, which is currently flying from northwest to southeast at an altitude of 259 statute miles over the uh, Northwest Pacific Ocean, everything on board in great shape. The uh, five U.S. OS crew members, U.S. Orbital Segment crew members, Kate Rubens, Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, Soichi Noguchi, the latter four having arrived uh, aboard the uh, Crew Dragon Resilience late uh, Monday night to form a seven-person crew on board the orbital outpost. So Everyone in good shape. Uh, the five U.S. OS crew members currently working inside uh, on a variety of uh, tasks, including uh, utilization, as well as transferring equipment from resilience over to the International Space Station. Meanwhile, Rubens uh, has uh, completed her work in support of the uh, preparation of the cosmonauts on board uh, Expedition 64 Commander Sergei Ryzhikov and Flight Engineer Sergei Kodsverchkov, who are inside the Poisk module conducting uh, a methodical series of tasks on a checklist to depressurize uh, the Poisk, repressurizing it, and then depressurizing it again prior to opening up the spacewalk hatch. And this is the first ever use of Poisk as an airlock. This is the uh, first tentative step in the ultimate decommissioning of the other module on the opposite side of the Russian segment, the Piers docking compartment that has served uh, both as a docking port and as a spacewalking airlock since it was launched in September of 2001. Piers next year will be disposed of uh, through uh, the use of a progress resupply vehicle. Uh, a progress will be launched, will dock to Piers, and then uh, it will uh, be detached from the uh, Earth-facing side of the Russian segment and deorbited to clear the decks for the launching of the Nauka multipurpose laboratory module, a huge 22-ton module, uh, 43 feet in length, 13 and a half feet in diameter, uh, that will be launched on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome to replace piers and serve both as a research laboratory uh, as well as a docking port and an airlock for Russian spacewalks. Five minutes stabilization time is over. Kavadepago is to valve should be closed manually by you. Sounds good. Kavadepago SM. What position again, Moscow? Closed. Kavadep SM valve should be closed manually. Kavadep SM is in the closed position now. Copy, Kate. Now, what about PHO pressure on MV? Five. Nine 
nine is the current pressure. Copy, Kate, five nine nine. Okay, start for five minute timer to monitor the pressure. Copy. Inaudible from EV one. Sergey, one and two. So uh, pressure gauge pressure in your spacesuit. Uh, Zero eighteen uh, for EV one and zero eighteen for EV two. Great. And so, what about the uh, pre brief timer? How much is time is left? Fifteen minutes forty-five seconds. Принято. Хорошо. Copy. That's good. We are in the uh, very early stages of today's activities that will ultimately lead to Rizhikov and Kudzferchkov uh, floating outside of the Poist airlock uh, to begin their work for the day. Once outside, uh, they have about five and a half hours of uh, spacewalking tasks to complete, including uh, the replacement of uh, the hardware for a uh, fluid flow regulator uh, that uh, does just what the name suggests, uh, provides uh, the right regulation of fluids to flow through the uh, plumbing of the Zarya module of the International Space Station. Uh, the spacewalk occurring two days shy of the 22nd anniversary of the launch of Zarya on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome as the first element of the International Space Station. They then uh, will make their way to disconnect a telemetry antenna called a Transit B antenna that uh, is connected at the interface between the Zvezda service module and uh, the piers docking compartment and reconnected to the interface to the Poisk module, the first uh, of many, many steps in the months ahead that will lead to the decommissioning of piers uh, as uh, a spacewalking airlock and a docking port for arriving Russian vehicles. They uh, will retrieve a uh, bracket uh, that is housed on the outside of piers that contains uh, a series of material science experiments. They'll clean a window on the uh, Zvezda service module and redirect a uh, thruster impingement monitoring unit on the Poisk module, all part of today's spacewalk. Once it begins, the spacewalk not yet underway, it will begin uh, with the initial opening of the hatch to the Poisk module following this series of activities to test the integrity of Poisk in terms of holding pressure, uh, both through a depressurization and repressurization set of uh, activities. Tell us the current pressure in PHO for M the MV. It is 600. So it is 600. We copy.
And the Pahel pressure per MV is 601. 601. Copy. And please proceed on my go from now on. Кейт, значит, давление в ПХО 601. So PHO pressure is 601. So now we open cover the valve, Copy. KVD PGO SM is in position open. Copy, Kate, and please monitor the pressure in PHO per MV and in FGB till the pressures are equalized. So, what is the pressure in FGB right now per MV? Six nine four is the current pressure. Not, not connected. And in FGB, unintelligible. Number two. Copy. SKB Tekushi Javlinia for Manova Converter at the Simso treated cat. And in FGB per MV, current pressure is seven three five. Copy. That's good. We copy. 735. And operator 1 and operator 2, EV1 and EV2. So, just wanted to report that for the first suit, it's 017 and 018, and 68. Two is the pressure, and the time for the desaturated the, for the pre-breathe that we have left is 8:40. Copy. And what is the? Could you come again? What's the pressure in MRM2? 6:82 is the pressure in MRM2. You're hearing uh, the interpretation of uh, communications between. Uh, the flight controllers of the Russian Mission Control Center in Karolyov on the outskirts of Moscow and uh, the two cosmonauts, Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kudsverchkov, who are inside the Poisk module, uh, currently uh, pre-breathing pure oxygen as part of the uh, validation of Poisk to be used as an airlock for Russian spacewalks, which it will uh, today for the first time. They uh, conducted a partial depressurization of Poisk now pre-breathing pure oxygen. They will uh, open up the hatch to Poisk uh, after completing uh, the depressurization down to vacuum a short time from now, inspect the seals around uh, the hatch to make sure that uh, they're in good shape before closing the hatch and doing a partial repressurization prior to depressurizing uh, Poisk for uh, one final time and opening up the hatch uh, to float outside to begin their spacewalk today. Uh, per MV 734. Monitoring uh, pressures inside uh, the Zvezda service module is NASA flight engineer Kate Rubens, who helped uh, the cosmonauts suit up earlier this morning in their Russian Orlan spacesuits. The International Space Station and its seven occupants flying from northwest to southeast across the Pacific Ocean in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. 
Kim Kim It's somewhere in between 734 and 735. Okay. And in FGB, the pressure is approximately the same. FGB PGO pressure is 734.5. Copy. All right, let's put the KVD valve in, elect in electrical control mode. Copy, in work. All right, KVD PGO SM is in electrical control mode. Copy, that's good. Sergei 1 and Sergei 2, we are done with the verifying at Opahawa um, leak check and the um, patches are leak tight and we are ready to continue with the proofread. Okay, we are, we understand, and we have five minutes left on the timer. Copy. Uh, Sergey, uh, just uh, wanted to ask you to prepare um, few cards, six, step 12. All right, I have it in front of me. And please, let's put 12.1 in work. Only step 12. Point one to prep control. All right, pneumatic valve is off. Uh, regulator prime. Regulator. Um, so we have prime first, uh, first and second. Thanks. First, prime, and then second. EV two. All right, stand by. Um, we have it as I have it as prime two. Copy. For, uh, the pump and the fans for EV one and EV two are on. The transmitter for EV one is on, and I confirm the same for the EV two. For breathe, breathe. We have in the valve in position open. Okay, we copy. That is good. Let's stand by for the end of the countdown and then proceed per my go. All right, we are standing by for the next three and a half minutes. Sergey 1 and Sergey 2, how much is on the pre-breathe timer? A minute and a half. Copy.
Moscow, we are done with the pre-breathe. And the counter started implementing. No copy. We copy. Please prepare step to perform step 12.2, MRM to depress, and please um, do it on my go. We copy. Сергей, you can put step 12.2 in work. Copy. So here we activate the injectors in work. We put the injector in the next in the correct position. All right. And we're standing by for the five minute timer. And we are dropping going down on the pressure till Unintelligible. The injector. Did you start? Did you get the timers that are with a countdown? All right. Twenty-nine. Well, oh, for me, it's not there. Сергей, you should get the injector, uh, like, at all two BSS, and then the atmosphere, and then you would have the counter there. So, yes, I do have it. All right, Sergey, open KVD SO valve and start depressing MRM2. Till what pressure? 12 millimeters, that's what we have planned. Please monitor the pressure in the module and also in the suit. So you would have to have 0 0.35, 0 0.34 in the suit and 350. All right, SO is open. The current pressure is 5. 3.0 and uh, pressure is 3.9 for me as the SO close, uh, opened at 14.45. The current pressure is 480. We're monitoring the pressure drop till it gets to 350. No, 0.35, 0.34. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're following along, uh, the pre-breathe of pure oxygen by Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov inside the Poisk module airlock is complete. They have uh, resumed uh, the depressurization of the airlock down to vacuum before opening up uh, the EVA hatch or the spacewalk hatch on the side of Poisk. That's out of the view that you just saw in this downlink video. Uh, we uh, are in a handover between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system at the moment. You can open Once uh, the hatch is open, they will conduct an inspection of the seals around the hatch to make sure that they are free of any debris before closing the hatch once again and conducting a partial repressurization of Poisk to about 260 millimeters of mercury for a final leak check before they open the hatch one more time and then we'll float outside to officially begin today's spacewalk that will be marked uh, by uh, a series of tasks, including uh, the repositioning of an antenna from the interface between the Poisk and the Zvezda service module to the Poisk module, the first step uh, in a long series of work uh, that will uh, result in the decommissioning of the pier's docking compartment as an airlock prior to its disposal next year. As the two valve is open, current pressure is two seven zero. The sky is stable, and we are going to deactivate the injector in two minutes. So, what's the counter? One minute, fifteen seconds. Copy. That's good. 
the next step is when the pressure hits about 100 millimeters that the BSS or LAN interface unit needs to be put in the correct position. So once you hit that pressure, please let me know. Copy. Will do. So you would have to put the SDSO valve in the position in position closed. All right, in 34 seconds. Copy. Sergey, second, what's on the count? What's on the timer for you? 26, 26 seconds. All right. So once you get to zero, 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 you would be putting the uh, pneumatic valve. in the position closed. Please verify that the, that the inject, injector should be off. All right, counter is at zero, uh, pressure is 140, and we are putting the injectors um, in the off position. We are getting correct indicators indications and current pressure is 125 and we're standing by for the audio signal and the pressure in the suits for both is 0 0.38 copy and we are standing by uh, for your report uh, regarding Orlan interface unit um, that the pressure is 20 millimeters, zero two um, open for EVA. What's the pressure? The current pressure is 100. And we got the warning for both suits. Uh, we got the in signal for both suits. Correction. All right. And then please uh, be ready to put the BSS Orlan interface unit in. Um, position for EVA. So with the uh, pre-breathe of pure oxygen having been completed and uh, everything uh, checked out by the cosmonauts uh, inside the Poisk airlock, that uh, module's airlock now being depressurized down to vacuum, uh, prior to the opening of the hatch that will mark the official start of the clock for today's spacewalk by uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov. 70 millimeters. Copy. Thank you. Delta for pressure drop is slowing down. Uh, the current pressure in is 15 millimeters. Sergei, we copy and we are standing by when pressure in MRM2 is going to reach 20 millimeters. And then uh, we. When you hear uh, the uh, interpretation of the conversation between the Russian mission controllers in Korolyov and uh, the crew inside Poisk, the reference to Sergei 1 is to ex uh, Expedition 64 Commander Sergei Rizhikov. Sergei 2 is Kud Sverchkov. Right. We are at 40. Millimeters. We got another signal at 320. We got the signal for both suits. Copy, that's good.
Давление 30. Pressure is 30. Это? Copy. Pressure is 20 millimeters, and I am putting Orlan into um, on the Orlan interface unit in O2, open EVA, and stand by till you reach 12 millimeters in MRM, 2 per MV. Copy, and current pressure is 18 millimeters in MRM, 2 per MV. Copy. Fifteen millimeters is the pressure in MRM two. Сергей, So what is the pressure in this suit for Odeska? Zero point thirty-seven. And zero point thirty-eight for me. Okay, that's good. Pressure in MRM two is. 14 millimeters. Bobby, once the pressure goes down to 12 millimeters, please put cut as the two valve in position closed and then cut as the SODC1 also afterwards. After cut as the two put it also in position closed. We'll go. And the pressure is 12 millimeters. I am closing as the two in as the two is in position closed, and I'm closing as the as or in position closed, and um, we are getting the the message, the correct message. And what's the pressure in MRM2 currently? It is 11 millimeters. All right, please put step 13 in work. That's going to be MRM2 final leak check. Um, so please monitor the pressure in MRM2 per MV. Copy. And please start the five minute timer. Five minute timer has been started. That's good. Copy. The uh, pressure inside the Poisk airlock is approaching vacuum, at which point uh, the hatch uh, will be open by uh, Rizhikov and could Sverchkov. The first uh, in a series of uh, procedures that will lead to uh, it being opened for a second time to uh, permit uh, the spacewalk uh, to proceed, all part of uh, the validation of uh, the Poisk module uh, to be used for Russian uh, spacewalk activity to ensure that uh, the seals around uh, the hatch to Poisk are clean and uh, can hold pressure at a variety of different uh, intervals in the depressurization, repressurization procedures.
Сереж, давление... Сергей, what is the current uh, pressure in MRM2? Uh, two minutes uh, have elapsed. Let me get in uh, the original sure. position to make sure uh, I get the clear reading. Okay. Eleven millimeters. Copy eleven millimeters. That's good. Чтобы вы понимали, там после окончания герметичности у нас с вами фрагменты, связанные с переходом на автономное питание, выполняться не будет. Мы на электрофазе, на электрофазе, на электрофазе, на электрофазе, на электрофазе, на We'll refresh special to 260 millimeters and we'll do the EV uh, hatch leak check. Copy. Again, uh, the series of steps uh, you're hearing uh, being relayed uh, to the two cosmonauts from the Russian flight controllers in Korolyov, all part of uh, the checkout of the Poisk module's uh, airlock uh, seals, the hatchway. Uh, out uh, into the vacuum of space. Ryzhikov and Kudsverchkov are hooked up inside Poisk uh, to life support systems. Uh, they will go on internal Orlon suit power uh, as soon as uh, they are ready to exit uh, the Poisk airlock a short time from now. First, uh, the hatch will be open to Poisk. That will start the clock running on today's spacewalk, the 232nd, in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades. They will inspect uh, the seals around the circumference of the hatch before closing the hatch again and conducting a partial repressurization of the poise catch and the airlock to about 260 millimeters of mercury. One final leak check will be performed before they uh, depressurize uh, poise again down to vacuum and then they'll open up the hatch uh, for a second time and float outside to begin today's spacewalking work. Five, five minutes are up. What is the current pressure reading? MRM2 pressure is 11 millimeters. Okay, copy. That's good. Uh, let's check our The pressure monitoring was successful correction, and now you'll proceed with uh, Artem guiding you. Copy. Uh, Artem, go ahead. Hello, guys. Uh, how are you feeling? All was well? All right. Uh, so, let's do a quick check up just to review uh, the steps. We'll be working outside. Uh, outside. Do not rush. Uh, there is no need to rush. Uh, move your hands uh, and arms carefully. Make sure that you're not tired because you will be working for a long time. Uh, make, so, make sure uh, you uh, work uh, uh, carefully. To, Make sure that you ask. And, and then, first of all, uh, I wanted to ask you to activate the um, helmet lights and cameras. EV2, the light is on. Copy. And the camera is on for EV2. This is EV1. The lights and cameras are on. Okay, copy. Lights and cameras on for both. 
Так, у меня все дойдет, не горит камера. And the camera LED is not illuminated. This is EV1. Well, I confirm activation now. Copy. Тогда следующий момент. Okay, so the next point. Please look around. Make sure that everything is tethered and your hooks are secured on the rails. This is EV2. I confirm that it is secured. Принято. Okay. This is EV1. Let me rehook the hook. Stand by one. I guess it will be better to come up from that side. It's not really that convenient. This is EV hatch. My hook is closed. And I moved it onto a different location. Copy. So you're going to start the EV hatch opening procedure, get the hatch tool to open the hatch. And please put the tab, the hatch tab, in the position, uh, in the operating position. Copy. The uh, latches are fully, latch handle is fully deflected. Copy. And let me reposition myself. The two tabs are facing each other, and I can see that it is in the open position. Some, something is in the way. Uh, am I bumping against the tether? It's pulling. With the uh, pre-breathe of pure oxygen complete and uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, happy with what they're seeing in terms of the leak checks on the Poisk module airlock, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov are checking all of their tools and tethers before they get the go-ahead to open up the hatch that will start the clock running on today's spacewalk. Yes, I can see. The International Space Station currently traveling over the South Atlantic, orbiting from southwest to northeast at an altitude of 260 statute miles. in the way. Okay, so let's do it like this. Yes, that's excellent. The tab is now in the uh, operating position, copy. And you're going to uh, install the hatch tool uh, on the um, uh, hatch drive shaft. It is installed, copy, and I'm ready now. You go to start the rotation and please monitor the uh, operation of rollers. Rollers are engaged, copy, copy all the rollers on my side are visible. Well, the feather got wrapped around it. So move it back. Well, it's not moving. Okay, stand by. So you need to move it until it clicks. Correct. We had a quick calm drop out. We are going to have a calm drop out. Okay, so we're standing by for AOS. Yes, copy, standing by. Okay, that's more convenient, and I, I'm going to reposition myself, so it's more convenient for you as well. So, now it's uh, 
sort of funny. Well, I, I guess I will try to move my legs somewhere. Okay, should I lengthen the tether? Yes. Yes, we are supposed to be LOS right now, but uh, we can still talk. The comm is intermittent, so uh, let's wait for 30 seconds. All right. All right, you're going to proceed, and uh, could you uh, please pull the handle uh, all the way to hard stop, copy, and uh, hold it until the uh, pressure drop begins. Okay, standing by. Okay, one, one second. Yes. And I can visually see... Dust. Okay, the pressure is decreasing. Current reading is five millimeters. Copy. And please hold it in that position. We are, guys, we're not getting the video now, so uh, please provide detailed commentary on the hedge uh, opening. Uh, okay, copy. Four millimeters. Uh, this is the current pressure reading in the module. Copy. Okay, so I Tap on it, and it's one millimeter, actually less than one millimeter. Okay, copy. So you're going to open the hatch. Stand by. Uh, sure. Let me turn around. Sure. We had a quick LOS. How are you doing, guys? Yes. Please repeat your last. We did not copy. We had intermittent con. Well, we're opening the hatch. Are you ready for hatch opening? Well, the hatch is moving a bit, but uh, it's coming back to its initial position. So we'll try to pull it carefully, both of us. Okay, um, Sergey, move to the right, copy. As much as you can. Can you reach it? No. Uh, not yet. Okay, like this. All right. Okay, got it. Let's do it. One, two, three. Uh, I have a feeling that it is spring loaded. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and try. Okay, okay. it's open. It's appro approximately 20 to 25 degrees open. And I can see it on, on, on my side, the hatch seals are all even, uh, and the uh, position on the clock is 9 o'clock, and then 12 o'clock. Six o'clock. It's all even, no damage, and the, I do not see anything on the contact surface, and I have inspected the contact surface. I do not see any uh, pod or residual uh, stuff. 
copy and I'm trying to turn around closer to the hatch. Okay, let me pull it further down. At three o'clock, this is what I'm expecting, and I am expecting the area uh, from 12 o'clock to one o'clock, and up to eight o'clock. It's uh, sort of interesting here. There's something, well, look, there's some, a piece of something, maybe a piece of tape, but other than that, the rubber steel is clean. I do not see any damage. And let me move down a bit. And did you manage to open the hatch fully? Okay, I keep in, in, inspecting the seals from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. I do not see any damage here. Just small pieces of dust, I guess. Yes, you can see that the dust coming out of here on the seal, from the seals. And visually, I do not see any damage. And if necessary, we can uh, photograph it. Yes, uh, please do so. It is necessary. Then go ahead and open the hatch fully and use the GoPro camera to photograph to film the perimeter. No, no, it's not necessary. Yes, I think so, too. So I just need to uh, hold on to something. Okay. Okay, I'm holding the hatch and holding it, too. Okay. Okay, there it is. Whistler is removed. Quister is on and it's recording, copy. I'm proceeding with the filming, starting from 12 o'clock position and moving clockwise as much as I can reach. All right, and uh, you're going just fine. Okay, I'm letting go. All right, that's excellent, like this. Going from 12 o'clock to... Okay. Should you just give it to me? All right. Are you holding it? Yes. Okay, so I, I will keep... This is Mission Control Houston. The hatch uh, to the Poisk module is open for the first time ever. To uh, officially begin today's spacewalk, we are uh, standing by for an official time from the Russian Mission Control Center in Karlyov, outside of Moscow. Uh, legs are pushing against the uh, two cosmonauts uh, who have uh, worked uh, their way through all of the pre-breathe uh, procedures and the depressurization of Poisk up to this point to validate uh, the airlock's integrity are inspecting the seals around the circumference of the Poisk airlock hatch. So uh, as soon as we get an official start time for today's spacewalk, we'll pass it along. But again, uh, the hatch is open to Poisk, the 232nd spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly and Maintenance underway. Did you copy? Uh, filming is complete. All right, uh, copy. Uh, you're going to close out filming. Hatch, and you're going to close the hatch. Copy. Please inspect the contact surface once again to make sure that there is no fog, that nothing came out during the uh, hatch opening, and please check rubber seals, make sure that the uh, clear of any debris. Uh, okay, there is nothing on the contact surface here. Uh, the, all the dust came out mostly. Contact surface is clean on my side. And, uh, and uh, flight controllers in Moscow now confirming the official start time for today's spacewalk. 9.12 a.m. Central Time, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time. 
with the opening of the hatch to the Poisk module. Again, today's official start time for the spacewalk by Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov, 9.12 a.m. Central, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time. Should I move it? Yes, and go ahead. And I'm ready. I made space for you here. Okay, here it is. Okay, stand by. Your arm is in the way. It's pushing against it. Okay, excellent. Got it. I'm ready to close it. Put it in the operating position. Okay, copy. And your go to... The next step uh, here will be uh, for Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov to close this hatch once again and uh, repressurize uh, Poisk partially to about 260 millimeters of mercury uh, in one final leak check before they open up the hatch a second time uh, and then will float outside to begin their work in the void of space. But again, the clock will not uh, be reset. It, uh, the clock is moving now on today's spacewalk and will continue to tick away with the start time of 9.12 a.m. Central, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time. Okay. Do you see the rollers? Yeah, and they're moving in. Uh, okay, so move it all the way to stop, the hard stop until it clicks. Okay, excellent, great. All right, uh, Sergey, you're going to remove the hatch tool. Why? No, на всякий случай, чтобы Well, just, just in case to make sure it doesn't get damaged during repress. Copy. It is removed now. Copy. And I will pass it on to Dima. Copy. Сереж, это Дмитрий. Сергей, это Дмитрий. So, please find your card 10. This is a separate procedure for repress, and please press it in step 3, and then repress to 260 millimeters. When you're ready, we will start. Okay, we'll retrieve the cue card now. It is slightly off to the side here. Размещайтесь в районе рабочего места. Yes, move to your working area and uh, please set up the cue card. Фрагмент 10. Cue card 10. Фрагмент 10, шаг 3. Cue card 10, step 3. Дух мим 2 до 260 мм. Мм to 260 мм. That's Copy. That's affirmative. And uh, we have the cue card. Well, if it's ready and set up, then you are go to start. Monitoring KSD2 valve, uh, KSD2 and KSD2 valves are closed on EVA uh, support panel in MRM2. KSD2 is not illuminated. And I am opening KSD2 as so it is enabled now. Uh, and I confirm that LED is on, copy, uh, starting the stopwatch and opening KVDPHO as to valve, copy. KVDPHO as to valve is open, and the pressure is increasing. Please report a current suit pressure and the MRM2 pressure. Suit pressure is 0.35, and the pressure gauge reading shows almost 30. Copy, that's good. The pressure is 0.3 for EV1 and for EV2 as well. And 70, okay. It is less than 
point zero two uh, during the compression. Well, I don't think we'll get to that. Actually, okay, that's affirmative. Module pressure is ninety. Copy. Seat pressure is point twenty six. Point twenty six for EV two. One minute is up. Copy. That's good. Module pressure is 120. Uh, 2 and 2, this is the current uh, pressure reading. Point 22, is that correct? Yes, point 22. Okay. One forty five, this is the module pressure and Orland pressure indicator shows point nineteen for E V one. Copy. Two minutes. Two minutes. Of repress or up. Pressure in module is one seventy and uh, good pressure is point sixteen. Copy. That's good. We're moving to the pressure region of 260. When you reach 260, in MRM2, you will close to the PHO from uh, EVA support panel in MRM2. Uh, yes, that's affirmative. We confirm all. And standing by for five minutes special stabilization. If you don't get to 260, then we will be uh, monitoring the pressure during six minutes. Copy. We've repressed the two fifteen in three minutes and the sit pressure is point one for E V one, point one for E V two. Copy. Copy. Three point five minutes. Um, we have repressed to two forty. The pressure is zero point zero eight. Copy. Good. Current pressure reading is two fifty. Copy. Kate, what is the PHO pressure on MVAP pressure gauge? Inaudible. 260, and then close and cover the PHO as a valve copy. Uh, and the uh, pressure is 0 0.03 and 0 0.05. Uh, LED is off, and I am in Henderson. And uh, I confirm that LED is off now, and I'm setting the five minute timer. Copy. Uh, 4.45. Copy. The timer is. Set up now. Set it now. The current pressure region is 264. This is Kate. Current and vent pressure gauge reading is 292. Copy Kate. 292. This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, hatch again closed to the Poisk module and a partial repressurization of the module underway by Rizhikov and Kudzferchkov being monitored on the other side of the uh,
POISC service module interface by NASA flight engineer Kate Rubens. Once uh, a final leak check is conducted, the uh, POISC will be depressurized back down to vacuum one more time and the hatch reopened to enable Rizhikov and Kudzferchkov to move outside to begin their work for the day. The actual start time for the spacewalk uh, was 9.12 a.m. Central, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time at the point at which the hatch was opened for the first time. Two minutes are up with uh, module pressure is almost 264, or to be more uh, precise, 263.5, but closer to 264. Copy. Station Moscow, uh, MRM2 pressure reading, Sergey, could you please uh, report it? Four minutes have passed. The pressure is the same. 263.5, uh, same pressure. All of this work uh, being conducted by Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov to uh, make sure that the seals are around the circumference of the Poisk airlock hatch and the airlock itself to make sure pressure is holding the way it should be is all designed uh, to confirm that the airlock is good to go uh, for future Russian spacewalks. Over. As it uh, begins the process of replacing the pier's docking compartment as the venue for from which Russian spacewalks will be conducted until the delivery of the Nyoka multipurpose laboratory module next year, which will uh, be installed on the earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station after pier's is detached and disposed of in the Pacific Ocean by a visiting Progress cargo ship. Copy. Preliminary MRM2 leak check. Uh, it's in work. Copy. So we are standing by. So the, the current pressure is 263.5. Uh, so, so it should not be um, uh, de decrease of uh, not more than two millimeters. So we are standing by for that. Yes. Copy that. Kate copies. While this uh, work is ongoing uh, in advance of Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov floating outside to begin their EVA work for the day, 
Kate Rubens has been monitoring activities uh, in the Russian segment of the station. She helped Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov suit up earlier this morning, and she will help them uh, out of their suits later today when the spacewalk is completed. The four uh, astronauts who arrived on Monday night aboard the Crew Dragon Resilience following its launch on Sunday from the Kennedy Space Center atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. They're uh, in the process of conducting scientific experiments, some early utilization, and transferring equipment and uh, flight data files from Dragon over to the International Space Station for their six-month mission as part of the Expedition 64 crew. You see from left to right, Kate Rubens, Victor Glover, Soichi Noguchi, Sergei Ryzhikov, Mike Hopkins, Shannon Walker, and Sergei Kud Sverchkov. Сергей, один. So could you please tell the MV pressure on MRM2? Давление 263.5. Uh, it is stable. No delta T. Uh, that sounds good. Copy. Proceed. Proceed monitoring. Yes, we still have 2.5 uh, minutes left. We confirm. EV1, could you please hold this? I will try to tie this up. Everything is fine. Once outside of the uh, Poisk airlock, Kud Sverchkov will be first out, actually. He uh, will once again uh, check the uh, seals around uh, the airlock hatch to this newly employed uh, module for Russian-based spacewalks. He'll install a protective ring around uh, the hatchway uh, to make sure that it doesn't incur any damage from any uh, micrometeoroid uh, particles uh, during the course of the uh, excursion that's expected to last up to six hours in duration. Ryzhikov will follow him outside, uh, carrying an airtight container, within which is a brand new uh, piece of hardware called a fluid flow regulator that uh, he and Kud Sverchkov will install uh, on the Zarya module to replace an older unit. This uh, piece of hardware uh, will do just what the name suggests and uh, regulate the flow of fluids through the plumbing on the Zarya module, the first component ever launched of the International Space Station, two days shy of its 22nd anniversary of that launch on a Proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, November 20th, 1998. 263.5 is the reading. 263.5, copy. That sounds good. As you saw in that graphic just a moment ago, uh, once outside, uh, you'll identify Ryzhikov. Uh, he's wearing the Orlon suit with the red stripes as EV-1, or extravehicular crew member number one, the ISS commander for Expedition 64. He also will have a helmet camera bearing the number 20 that you'll see on your screen uh, when we get views uh, through uh, the helmet cams that will be worn by the two spacewalkers. Could Sverchkov, EV-2, will be wearing the Orlon suit with the blue stripes. His helmet camera is number 18. 
This is the first spacewalk for both cosmonauts. So the EVH is tight, so we will depress now from MRM2, MRM2 depress, and in Q part 6, uh, you will perform the following actions. You will have to control BSS EV uh, position. Oh, okay, yes. Oh, Position is EVA position and TSD store should be open. Also, uh, control the LED on the display, and after that, you will have to open TSD 2 manually and uh, depress after that. So, the injector should not be activated, right? Inaudible. So KSD SO depress valve is open manually. KSD SO is open. I can confirm that because LED is illuminated on the panel. Final leak checks uh, of the uh, Poisk module hatch uh, being conducted uh, before it is depressurized back down to vacuum one final time uh, to enable the hatch to be opened. Uh, allowing Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov to float outside. EV2 as well. EV2, 10 in the module. Pressure ready. Could you please report uh, module pressure and spacesuit pressure? Copy, will do. 190 is in the module. 015 for EV1, 015 is for EV2. Copy. Kate, how do you copy? Uh, this is Mitri regarding the depressed repressed procedure. You know, there are some noises, interference. So 150 in the module. The pressure reading, yes, I can confirm we have some interference. Kate, uh, how do you copy me? I copy you. Uh, not, not so good, but I can copy you. Kate? We will have to equalize pressure between FGB and PHO, so KVD SM should be in the open position. You should be placed in the open position. Copy. KVD SM in the uh, open position is in work. Copy. We are standing by for your report on that, Kate. 100 millimeters is the module pressure, copy. 0.23 is the spacesuit pressure, copy. 0.26, inaudible. KVDPGO SM valve is open, copy. Now, please equalize the pressure between FGB and PSO Kate. Copy in work. EV1 and EV2, space use pressure readings, please. And in the module as well. 75 is in the module, 029 for EV1. Okay, 75 is in the module, 029 is in the space use. Copy. Module pressure is 5-0-0-31 is the space suit pressure for EV-1. Same for EV-2, copy.
The module pressure is 35.35 and the space suit 034. Heading down to vacuum one more time. The Poisk module uh, is performing as advertised and uh, good spacesuits reported by Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov. When we reach 12 millimeters, we confirm. This is Kate, unintelligible. Kate, you know, we did not copy your last. Could you please repeat PHO MV pressure reading? It is increasing. Seven two four is the current pressure, and it is still increasing. Seven two four PHO pressure. What about FGB pressure, Kate? It is being equalized in FGB. The current pressure is 733. Copy 733, Kate. Continue to equalize the pressure, Kate. Copy in work. And as you can hear, uh, the Russian flight controllers through the interpreter talking to Kate Rubens in the Russian segment of the International Space Station as she works to equalize pressure between Poisk and the uh, different uh, modules on the Russian side of the International Space Station, the precursor uh, to Poisk going down to vacuum, enabling uh, Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov to open the hatch f one final time uh, to begin uh, the process of moving outside with their tools for the start of the tasks associated with today's excursion. Module pressure is 12 millimeters and I'm ready to close as the two well and as the SO as well. If it's a go to close as the and the as the SO well as the two is closed Moscow copy and I'm closing as the SO well. On uh, the EVA panel MRM2, the LED should not be illuminated. Yes, the, the, it is not illuminated. Copy, sounds good. It is 11 uh, millimeters, uh, actually, the pressure reading. Sounds good. Sergei, so please proceed. You card 7, step 14, and you will start performing the step on my go. Copy. Cue card number 7. Kate, what is MV PSO pressure and also FGB pressure? Reading? PSO MV 731. 731. 731 in PSO as well. So do I say it correctly that the pressure has been equalized? Yes. Yes, unfortunately I cannot uh, copy you very well. So now the valve on Pago SM should be transitioned to electrical control case. Cover the Pago SM valve should be in in position of electrical control. Copy, Kate. It is in the electrical position. Uh, EV1, are you ready to work step 14 of the QCAR 7? Yes, we are. So we are starting transition of the spacesuit to autonomous power. 
Copy. The temperature control health should be trans uh, transitioned to uh, to position six. Preliminary or long cool down. EV1 in position six. Cosmonauts about to switch their Orlan suits to internal battery power. Again, a Russian spacewalk measured uh, from the time of hatch open to hatch close, unlike a U.S. spacewalk that is measured from battery power on on U.S. extravehicular mobility units in the Quest airlock to airlock repress at the end of the spacewalk. On the display, you should have the message uh, PO2 prime. You know, we cannot copy you, Moscow. What is the primary bottle, O2 bottle pressure? 415, inaudible. Uh, and what about uh, as a reading, uh, 22.5, inaudible. Copy. Now, BSS should be in the position closed. Copy. What about the... Covering uh, online fluid umbilical, uh, yes, after it is in the closed position, it will have to be capped. Copy. So O2 uh, is in the position closed. What about the suit gauge pressure? 0.36 for EV1, 0.36 for EV2 is the space suit pressure. So can you see PO2 primary in your, on your display? Come again. The primary O2 bottle pressure, can you see it on your display? Four one five for EV one and uh, four one inaudible for EV two. Copy. Now you can tap uh, the umbilicals and uh, also work with the MLI uh, lab. Copy in work. Sergey, could you please hold the cue cards here? Yes, give them to me. Try not uh, to snag on anything. Good luck, guys. Thank you so much, Kate. So the um, umbilicals are kept, uh, and um, the electrical controllers of Berlin covered with MLI. Copy. Now you will have the go to egress very soon. So Artem will support you in opening the EV hatch, and after that uh, we will uh, continue to transition to autonomous power after the hatch is open. Copy, and uh, so we should not uh, throw away the cue cards as yet. Yes, that's, that's a firm. Keep them close. Guys. Now we will uh, reopen the hatch. We will open it once again for the second time. Copy. So we will try to position ourselves uh, comfortably. Now uh, use the hatch tool and uh, 
uh, place it in the working position. In work. The flag is in the work position, 19 degrees is the angle of the hatch, 290. Now put it on onto the uh, pin of the drive of the hatch, copy. Now so 11 years after its launch to the International Space Station, the Poisk module now being used as the spacewalking airlock for the first time as Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov check out their tools and tethers about to open up uh, the airlock hatch for a second time that uh, will enable them to float outside to begin their work. The rollers are moving. Copy. Then the pusher handle uh, should be pulled on uh, toward yourself. Yes, and we are leaving the hatch to here. Yes, so uh, the pusher is being pulled towards us until hard stop. Copy. Okay. Can I start moving the hatch? What about the pressure? Is it down completely? Is it vacuum now? Yes, zero. Copy, now you can open the hatch. Yeah, please retain the handle, hold the handle of the pusher and open the hatch. Hold that handle. Can you do it uh, simultaneously, if you two? No, Joy. Okay, so I will hold it here from this side. I am tightening it. And get ready. And uh, the hatch uh, to the Poisk airlock once again open. And uh, we should be seeing Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov here any moment. Rizhikov again will be wearing the Orlan suit with the red stripes as EV-1. Kud Sverchkov's Orlan suit will bear the blue stripes. Stand by Y1. Uh, let me reposition myself. You know, uh, I have to put it back. Of course, there is a king here. Copy. Okay, now. So we are removing this slack now. Copy. So the ED hatch is open and secured uh, with the uh, hook of page 201. Now, please install the protective ring, guys. Copy in work. Installing protective ring. So I am staying here, ED2, and you go ahead. Inaudible. Uh, will there be sufficient length here for us? Well, let's see. Wait, you know, um, just stop doing that. Uh, I will use a, a different way of operating. So when you install uh, the protective ring, uh, please monitor that the cord uh, is not in the um, hatch opening. Yes, we know that. So let us do it once again. 
this is enough? Maybe this is the way, the best way to do it. Okay, the locks are open. The ledgers are open. I confirm. Now I have this mark right before me. I pressed it down. Now I have it uh, transferred to this position and secure it. That's it. You know, there is probably a uh, longitude groove. Yes, I, I will test it right now. Now, yes, it is secured. The uh, hooks are secured. Artem, how did you copy? The protective ring is installed. The protective ring is installed. So Dima will support you from now on. Сергей, we are transitioning into independent autonomous power for the suits, and that's going to be Q card 7 and step 16. The cosmonauts have installed that uh, protective ring uh, around the circumference of the Poisk airlock hatch. That is a common procedure to make sure it is uh, pristine uh, for the duration of the spacewalk. And uh, we should be seeing the two cosmonauts outside any moment now. Could Sverchkov will be first out of the hatch, followed by Ryzhikov. Power supply in autonomous power. And, um, Please deactivate primary pump and then please put the transmitter in the off position. All right, we have everything transmitters, pump and fan are in required status. Uh, for EV1 and EV2. So, just wanted to make sure that you have, uh, for EV2, for Sergei 2, uh, that your uh, primary pump, fan, and transmitter are on. What is the U battery? 27.8 and 20 unintelligible for the second for EV2 and then please deactivate the tow mode on the um, control panel in MRM2 Copy in work. And please put SK1 and SK1 and suit 2 power. Put it in the off position for the first and for the second. All right, I am putting suit one in autonomous power, and I'm standing by verifying the lights. Uh, the LED is no longer illuminated. Uh, is the umbilical still connected? It is still um, connected, so disconnect the umbilical, copy and work. The umbilican, umbilical has been disconnected. All right, electrical umbilical is disconnected. Uh, do you read me well? Um, you come, uh, we do, just a little bit quiet. So, 
питание. Вначале снимаем питание на пол, когда мы приготовляем фал. It exchange power, and then suit one and two should be put in off position. In work for the first suit, and the umbilical is has been disconnected for suit two. Do you read me well? Yes. Uh, Закрываем электроразъемы скафандра клапанами FT. So please uh, close out the connectors for the Orlan suits with MLI um, done for the for suits for EV1 and for EV2. Copy and then once uh, the EV hatch is open, uh, we will give you a go to activate sublimators. All right, we open the EV hatch and it has been secured. Copy. I am passing you on to Artyom. Copy. All right, guys. Are you ready to go? EV2 goes to MRM2 SM handrail. And what about the sublimators? It's going to be on our go a little bit later. Copy. Hey, see it? Guys? We are going to be out of orbital night in a few seconds. And you will be able to see well. And so for sublimators, please start with suit one and then uh, proceed with suit two. Well, Sergei is only halfway out through the hatch. So what time do we turn on the sublimators? If you have... Our first view of uh, Sergei Kud Sverchkov uh, exiting the Poisk module airlock, the first time this has been used for a Russian spacewalk. Kud Sverchkov and uh, Sergei Ryzhikov, who will follow him momentarily, both conducting the first spacewalks of their careers we're now 54 minutes into the spacewalk that began at 9.12 a.m. Central, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time, with the opening of the hatch to the Poisk module for the first time after a series of leak checks and uh, validation tests on the integrity of the seals around this airlock being used for the first time for an EVA. Well, congratulations. You are out. So I am outside as well, connected to the handrail, and I am putting my sublimator in the, I'm activating my sublimator. So for EV2 as well, right? Yes. So TO indicated TO is in off position, and then Temperature control handle is in position three. We copy. All right. So EV1, temperature control handle is in position six. And now I'm putting it in position three. Let's just give a few seconds to for Sergei to situate himself. And then I have the filter. Have it up. Okay, we are standing by.
flying 260 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean. The International Space Station uh, moving into an orbital sunrise, moving from northwest to southeast on this orbit of the Earth. Sergei Kodesverchkov outside of the Poisk airlock, soon to be joined by Sergei Ryzhikov, who will hand him a uh, a package of hardware containing a new fluid flow regulator for the Zarya module, the first component ever launched for the International Space Station 22 years ago this coming Friday. All right, and let me unreal it here. All right, there we go. Don't pull yet. And the airtight container have been secured. Does that look good to you for you? Yes. And one hook. Both cosmonauts now outside. Uh, they're working with this so-called airtight container that includes uh, the new uh, fluid regulator uh, for the uh, Zarya module that will replace an older unit. That's the first task on tap for the two cosmonauts now that they have uh, confirmed the integrity of the Poisk module through a series of depressurization and repressurization exercises and leak checks of all of the hardware for that uh, airlock in use today for the first time. Just be careful. I have secured it. I have secured two. Could you hold it for a second? Let me move away a little bit. Okay. I'm moving. Careful. So, I'm getting that short hoop. Sergey, one, as far as I understand, you're egressing MRM, right? That's right. And what about the kit? It's on the opposite side. And I am there as well. Okay, so there is enough space for you, right? I can't see right now, but I think um, it's, the space is sufficient. Okay, we'll be standing by for... Um, Sergey, one report once you are out of the MRM. Okay. The hook is in my pocket there. And is it getting out? Nope. Fighting. I'll try and rotate it a little bit. Сергей, one and Sergei two. When you get a chance, you can uh, put the heat exchanger handle in the position zero and then put the neutral, neutral position. And if you can actually set the heating. Uh, I'm holding the container right now, so... Okay, I got it out. It's 
really not being cooperative. I think my long one is headed in the same direction as yours. right arm, a little bit closer to the handrail. Done. All right. I have secured the adjustable tether to the handrail for EV1. Resting. And the sun is out. You need to probably set it to half. Is everything looking good on your side? Yes. EV2 is out. EV1 is out. We copy. All right, guys, you can take a break, just orient yourself in regards to the modules, where to go, how to proceed, and we can start the translation on your go. Copy. Right. We are just as we have planned. We see that. Sergey. Do you have the flow control valve adjustment? Done. Is ISR on? Well, I'm putting the warm cold handle in position six. Gennady Mihalovich, do we have you go? All right, just put the handle at zero first. Please verify temperature control handle at zero. Please verify that. And you are in mid position uh, for the switch between warm and cold, and you have a go to act to perform the flow control valve adjustment. Done. We copy. Sergey, I'm going to take it over. Sounds good. I got it, and I hand it over, and I'm putting the uh, warm-cold switch to cold and then to mid-position, and the flow control valve adjustment is in position 2. We copy. I am ready. All right, we are ready for translation. Great. <laughs> 
At the bottom of your screen, uh, with the backpack and the red stripes, is Station Commander Sergei Ryzhikov. Just above him is Sergei Kud Sverchkov. They have uh, all of their tools together. Their suits are configured properly, and they're about to make their way over to the Zarya module, just a few feet away, to start uh, the replacement of an aging a piece of hardware called a fluid flow regulator that enables uh, all of the plumbing uh, to operate properly inside the Zarya module. I am catching it here. What? The container. Okay. All right. The adjustable rod is uh, connected to handrail 6011. We copy. And uh, um, the regular tether to 6023. Do you see me? Uh, do you see my back? Uh, can I fit there? Yes. I can see it, and you fit just fine. Okay, adjustable. Tether is connected to 6013. All right, here is it. Watch out for the tether. I see it. I'm going to move it. So 6012 is where I have my tether. Let me get a little bit closer. Can you reach it? I should. I have to. Just move cautiously. Are you going to move the tether for the container? I will. And our first helmet camera view uh, from Sergei Kud Sverchkov, uh, the number 18 in the lower right hand uh, corner of your screen, as he uh, begins uh, the process of making his way over to the Zarya module. He's being joined by Sergei Ryzhikov. Uh, we're still waiting on his helmet camera to be activated. Uh, that uh, will bear the number 20 in the lower right hand corner as they. Uh, will conduct the first of the tasks for today's spacewalk, that being the replacement of a fluid flow regulator for the Zarya module. So how are you feet? One hour, 10 minutes into today's spacewalk that is expected to last up to six hours. The container is here, right? Yes. Okay, now let's go to the handrails and I'm moving as close as possible to you. Okay, and I'm monitoring the situation. So, this transit bay, it should be below me. Yes, this bay, transit bay, that's where it should be. And BPDO should be above you. We do see it out of the corner of my eye. Well, 
You do, not me. Okay, I can see it a little bit. And as you are translating, please make sure you don't get your um, tethers tied up. Okay, I have moved my hooks and I'm working with the container now. Just a little bit. All right, there was a 20 second dropout. We're in the process of handing over uh, downlink video communications capability uh, between satellites on the uh, tracking and data relay satellite system. Uh, Sergei uh, Ryzhikov and Sergei Kudsverchkov moving a container over from the Poisk airlock to the um, Zarya module. Uh, that contains a brand new uh, fluid uh, flow device that will improve uh, the flow of uh, hydraulic uh, fluid and other uh, plumbing components uh, within that module, the first module ever launched for the International Space Station 22 years ago this coming Friday. And a good view of Poisk on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station, launched uh, on November 10th, 2009, 11 years ago, having served up to this point as a docking port for visiting Russian vehicles, and today for the first time serving as a uh, venue from which a spacewalk is being conducted. You can see uh, Ryzhikov on the left side of Poisk uh, wearing uh, the suit with the red stripes. Could Sverchkov is out of view at this moment. And now EV2, EV2 camera off and now camera on. The LED is not illuminated. And Reba only has one light on. Let me try it one more time. Let me cycle. Okay, so two lights are on, but the camera uh, LED uh, is not green. I press the button one more time, and now it is illuminated. We copy. So what lights are we talking about? U.S. lights or Orlan lights? U.S. lights. Well, you have a go to activate Orlan lights, too. And Sergey, please verify that the handle is uh, secured correctly with a pin, with a pin. The, hand, the handles are for, for your backpack, are secured correctly to the pin. Uh, we are um, not, we're not seeing correct telemetry. Okay, I had it, added it, and it should be in the correct position. Okay, we see that it is closed now in telemetry. Did you see whether it was um, coming away? Um, I did, and it wasn't. Okay, now we're getting the right telemetry. Thank you.
All right, uh, so the long one is attached to 6009. Sergey, could you please move the uh, cage hook to make sure that I don't have to reach two times? Okay, yes, we'll do. Okay, stand by, wait. Excellent. Got it. It is secured now. 6014 is, uh, and I'm moving now, pulling it up, so you can reach. Okay, so wait. Should I move over the, the tether? Which one? Okay, okay, let's go ahead and try doing that. Okay, let's do it during the next uh, transfer. Okay, so I'm holding it, giving it to you. I'm next to uh, uh, And we're monitoring you. And Sergey, one, did you cycle the camera? Okay, I didn't do that. I forgot about it because we started working on the handle. Okay, well, I'll do it now oh, when Sergey moves over here. Yes. Had a good view of uh, the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Uh, prominently in the center of the view, the Poisk module, uh, and on the left of it, Sergei Ryzhikov, the space station commander, Sergei Kud Sverchkov, uh, next to him. That long pole that you see attached to the Poisk module is the Strela boom, Strela being the Russian word for arrow, a telescoping boom that uh, the cosmonauts use to move uh, from one segment of the work sites around the Russian segment to another. On the far right of your screen, the ISS Progress 75 cargo ship uh, attached to the aft port of the Zvezda service module and will remain attached to that until the mid-February time frame. And I didn't see it when you turned it on, I guess. It blinked in a way. Okay, so can you see it now? I don't think it's illuminated. Moscow. Could you please confirm? Are you getting the video? No, we uh, do not have the video right now. What about video two? No, there is no WVS. Uh, uh, we only see the image that we're getting from the arm. Uh, okay, so the green one is illuminated. Three, correct, yes, and mine is illuminated too. Okay, so let's move on. Yes, let's move on now. Let's not spend time on it now. We are seeing you through the camera on the arm. So you can press it now, and then uh, we can it back to the camera up later. Okay, copy. So I'm uh, securing to the shortcut handrail. Okay, excellent. Sixty-one, sixteen. The, the kid goes there as well. I'm holding it. Okay, I'm handing it over to you. EV2, uh, 6015. Short one. I don't see. I don't see its number. 6005. Okay, yes. And. The uh, uh, kit hook is also installed on 6015, holding the kit, okay? And it is over, so I'm going to inspect this area. I don't think there should be anything in the way. Uh, as far as I remember, it, yes, uh, there is sufficient room here. Okay. 
and I'm I'm getting to a different shortcut handrail. Moving the kit over there, uh, moving along the handrail. Copy. No. Are you are you holding it? And I handed it over. I'm going I'm going to move it up just to make sure that it's more convenient for you. Okay. It's the hooks. The, the hooks are now secured. And the kit uh, is rehooked now as well, and I'm interested in with translation. Okay, so move closer then. Okay, excellent. And I can uh, uh, move it over here. Okay, are you holding it? Yes. Is it towards me? No. Наблюдаем картинку на шлемной камере второго. And we're getting the uh, WVS video of EV2. Copy. And also we're getting the view from the arm. It is the hook now, and the hook is... A good view of uh, Sergei Ryzhikov uh, working uh, to configure uh, equipment outside of the Poisk module airlock. Uh, right alongside of him is the uh, airtight container, as uh, it is called by the Russian specialists, within which uh, a brand new uh, fluid flow regulator, uh, which will be installed on the Zarya module shortly. And a helmet camera view from Sergei Kudsverchkov of the work uh, that he is conducting. And I'm moving over. Copy, copy. And uh, we can see you. Okay, got a bit too far. Do not rush. The International Space Station flying 260 miles over the South Atlantic, just off the east coast of Argentina. This orbit of the Earth carrying uh, the orbital outpost and its seven crew members from southwest to northeast on a track that will cross the western coast of Africa a short time from now. Okay, I got it. You got it? Yes.
Sergei Ryzhikov is uh, hovering right next to uh, the Zarya module. Uh, that's where this fluid flow regulator replacement work will be conducted a short time from now. That uh, module launched on a proton rocket on November 20th, 1998, 22 years ago this coming Friday, the first element of the International Space Station. The kit is secured to, to the flexible handrail copy, and we can see it as well. My lawn tether is uh, also on the soft handrail. The short one is installed on the uh, soft handrail. So you're holding it, yes, correct. It's on, on the second one, right? Yes, of course. Now I'll have to uh, hold on to the other uh, soft handrail. Sergey, can you move over? I guess I can rehook it now, and then you will be translating along the flexible handrails. Yes, that's what I thought too, and I'm monitoring. Okay, so let me move back a bit to not be in the way. Both hooks are now secured. And uh, I really have to watch my body position uh, in the space because uh, I get swinging back and forth. Well, I need to make sure that I don't mix them up. And there are different colors and barcodes. Okay, the hook is now secured. In, okay, tethered, copy. And let me reach towards the kit. I'm holding it. Copy. Copy, you're holding it. So let's turn it a bit. Let me grab onto the other handrail, and uh, you're going to get this from me because I'll have to move back by a few degrees. Okay, are you holding it? Yes, holding it. Can you try catching it now? Okay, excellent. And now I have to move over. Okay, let me do that. Stand by. Uh, yes, it's quite dusty here. I'm translating along the stop handrail. Okay, so I guess I will have to hold on to the flexible or soft handrails. Uh, so let me let let me do this. I'm at a maximum here, and I'm secured quite well. Okay, are you holding it? Yes, I'm holding it. Okay, so I'm handing it over to you. Yes. Uh, guys, we're getting the uh, video from both uh, cameras. Copy.
Застраховал оба своих. Both hooks uh, are now installed, and I will proceed with uh, the kit operations. The kit is now secured and tethered. Copy. Yo. I'm holding it. Okay, I'm handing it over to you. Inaudible. Switch into the handrail. 13, and I guess it's 50, it's not clear. Moving the kit over. The kit is now transferred. Copy. A bit over here. Okay, that's great. And the small hook is now installed to moving closer to you, and I am holding the kit. Okay, copy. So let me look around. So this is the panel that we need, and this is the uh, platform. I'm not going to rehook the large Artem, uh, it's uh, uh, hot uh, here since the uh, Aster automatic thermal control system is on. Can I move the handle to... This is Mission Control Houston, one hour, 33 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk, which also saw the uh, verification of the uh, ability of the Poisk module to support... Uh, a spacewalk for the first time, a great view here uh, from uh, an external camera on the International Space Station of the two cosmonauts, Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov, now uh, working on top of the Zarya module, the first element of the International Space Station launched 22 years ago. The container in between the two holds a new fluid flow regulator that uh, will replace an aging unit. Uh, to uh, do just what it uh, implies, uh, regulate the flow of fluids in the plumbing of uh, the Zarya module that uh, essentially connects the U.S. and Russian segments of the U.S. of the International Space Station. And a split-screen view of the two helmet cameras uh, on the cosmonauts. Uh, okay, well, the automatic system is on now, and what we have is the switches. Can we use that? So, as their automatic system. Sergei Kud Sverchkov's helmet camera is on the left, Sergei Ryzhikov's helmet camera on the right, as they work in tandem uh, to position themselves for the installation of this new uh, fluid regulator unit. Um, as their thermal control system is off, moving to six to four. Okay, so it's going to be like this. The hooks are moved now. Okay, no. So I wanted to move farther, but I guess it would be better to be here and to do one more. I have rehooked my feathers, and the kit has been uh, re feathered as well. I I'm now closer to the platform, okay? And I'm uh, holding it now. Copy. 
Handing it over. Okay, stand by. And the last While uh, the two cosmonauts are working uh, on the first uh, task of today's spacewalk, uh, the installation of this fluid uh, regulator unit in the Zarya module, uh, it is reported that uh, the resilience crew dragon that carried uh, Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and Soichi Noguchi to the International Space Station for its docking uh, late Monday night is now configured for what are known as quiescent operations, steady state operations at the International Space Station. Uh, it automatically docked to the forward port of the Harmony module late Monday night. The uh, four new residents uh, comprising uh, the addition to the Expedition 64 crew on board, they have spent the day transferring uh, cargo and uh, flight data files and uh, placing a Crew Dragon in the proper configuration for its six-month stay as a part of the International Space Station. I'm at my workstation monitoring the kit position. It's an excellent uh, position right now, and I'm holding it. Okay. And uh, Artem Inaudible, should we keep it here? Did you say uh, there are bars? Uh, uh, no, uh, no. Uh, wire ties. Can you can you see them on, on the video? Uh, well, okay, then you can keep them there. You put the latches in the operating position. They are in operating position now. Copy. And uh, you're going to install the pressurized uh, container on its uh, platform. Okay. Stand by, and I'll have to change the tether position as well. Okay, it's um, convenient now, and we'll proceed. I see the antenna here. I'm ready. Okay, so we'll keep going, move closer. I'm holding it. Okay, excellent. So let me uh, move closer to you. There is no digital numbering here, and I will use the color code. Two yellow ones on the side of uh, Sergey on plane to OK copy. So one four should be on your side. And the fact that there is no uh, labeling there, that's fine. That's how it's been for a while now. OK, move just a bit over here. OK, like that. And they're in on my side and on my side as well. Soft dock is confirmed. Copy. And please put the latches in closed position. Number four is closed. Number one is closed. Okay. Okay, everything is fine. Copy. And uh, we can uh, open the case that yes, copy. And uh, who is going to do that? EV1 or 2? Let me do that. Is it more convenient for you? Well, I, I guess I can do that with my right hand. Okay, so you are doing it, right? Please make two turns to open KSD. Copy. Uh, Sergey, two. So check out the connector for now. Uh, and two turns are complete. Uh, the connector next to handrail 1360 on, uh, uh, above the panel. So this is the metal uh, connector. 
Наблюдаю. I can see. Все верно. Ребят, and guys, I have a question. On the timeline, we were supposed to take a break. So do you need a break or should we continue? Well, uh, we can uh, take a break for, for one minute, or uh, we can proceed with, if we don't need to rush. Okay, then, and please take a break, then, and once you're ready, we will proceed. Okay. The uh, Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow uh, conferring with our two spacewalkers, Sergei Ryzhikov on the left, Sergei Kud Sverchkov on the right, and that uh, cylindrical container is the so-called airtight container housing a replacement uh, fluid regulator unit that will be installed in the Zarya module, uh, which they are working at. That's the uh, first element of the International Space Station launched 22 years ago this coming Friday. The two uh, cosmonauts uh, successfully tested uh, the uh, Poisk airlock for use for future Russian spacewalks. Uh, that uh, checked out in great shape. Uh, the crew is running a few minutes behind the timeline uh, for the day. Uh, and a good view now uh, from the helmet camera of Sergei Ryzhikov, the Expedition 64 commander, as he and uh, Kud Sverchkov prepare to remove this new replacement of fluid regulator from the container for its installation in Zarya that area and it would be great to see it. we're now one hour 43 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk other tasks on the docket will be the uh, disconnection of a telemetry antenna uh, that links uh, the Zvezda service module to the piers docking compartment and its attachment uh, to the uh, interface between Zvezda and the Poisk module that begins uh, the uh, lengthy a series of work uh, over the next uh, several months to decommission the Piers docking compartment for its uh, removal and disposal uh, via a Progress spacecraft next year that will clear the Earth-facing port of the Russian segment for the installation of the new Naoka uh, Mini uh, Multipurpose Laboratory module that will be launched next year on a Proton rocket uh, for its installation uh, as a laboratory an airlock and a docking port all in one uh, that uh, launch uh, to uh, take place uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, a launch date yet to be determined. Okay, it is off on my side. No, it is still full now. Okay, I don't want you to push it here. Uh, is it still on? Well, yes, let's uh, make sure that it goes off. Okay, two minutes are up. And we are ready to continue. Copy. If uh, you got a chance to rest and if you're ready, then uh, you can go ahead and start demating the connectors of RG SP K1. And please uh, provide commentary on uh, what you are doing. I can see the connector. It is on the Lirka clip, uh, the metal connector, one out of the three connectors. Copy. And do you see any labels? Labels uh, on the connector car RRG. Car RRG, that's the marking. Just one marking there. Okay, copy. And the cable is going between the first one and I guess the next one. That's where it's going. Okay, so go ahead and demate it now with your goal. Yes. Okay, so the cable S says SPR RRG H1. Okay, I guess that's uh, the one that we need. Yes, that's correct. And your goal 
go ahead and demate it. Demating the cable, and I do not see any pod or debris. Copy. And let me uh, secure the panel. Uh -huh. The two cosmonauts are now uh, removing uh, the new fluid regulator unit from that container, temporarily stowing it uh, before they begin to uh, unmate a series of connectors holding the older fluid regulator unit in place uh, that has been there since it, uh, the uh, Zarya module was launched 22 years ago. This brand new unit uh, will improve uh, the flow of fluids uh, through the plumbing system of the Zarya module. We are now uh, one hour, 47 minutes into today's spacewalk. The length is not enough. You know, the tether length is not enough for during the training drills. We had uh, the handrails on the cover, and here we don't have this handrail, so we'll have to switch tethers. Copy. You can use the uh, adjustable of tethers. Yes, we are working with them. Yes, so uh, you can rehook it. Sergey, you have cut out uh, from uh, from your kit, from your toolkit. Yes, I can see that. Thank you. Sergey, попробуй. Sergey, will you try that? For I don't have the enough length. Okay, the one the connected it on the container. You know, you don't have to demate it. You just transfer it, move it. Can you hold it? Okay, I've secured it here. Copy. I secured the old, the old one. Flow regulator. Now uh, work with MLI. Yes, I can see that. The so MLI flap is open. Now move this ring clip here. So we are uh, sewing the cable. Can you hold it? Copy. No, uh, re retrieve it. It should be in the center. It is more convenient for me here. Yes, go ahead and close it here. Yes, it is closed. The cable is uh, stowed. We are ready to open uh, the handle here. Go ahead. Be careful and please look for any uh, any drops of moisture. Beware of that, uh, okay? Yes, we will have to move with it later on. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I closed it. I opened it. I cannot see the cable. There are no drops, no moisture. Copy. Yeah, there's a little bit of the connector. Is a, There is a little bit of moisture on the connector. I am not looking at the connector. I cannot see it here, EV2. Yes, yes, and now EV2. You should uh, monitor the panel, right? Yes, and EV1. Yes. EV1, can you use the GoPro camera and take pictures of that? The, the connectors 
that are on the module itself, correct? Yes. Or the connectors on the panel itself, on the unit. Okay, GoPro camera is activated, and I'm uh, taking videos. So in four minutes, we will have eclipse. So the camera is off, OFF now. The camera is off. I'm retrieving it to, to its location. Putting it back. Now, can we move the panel? Yes, start securing the panel, guys. You know, I, uh, One hour, 52 minutes into the spacewalk, uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, continue to demate connectors in the replacement of a fluid uh, regulator component uh, on the Zarya module, the first uh, task of today's spacewalk, which also featured the validation of the Poisk uh, module as an airlock for today's spacewalk and uh, those to be conducted out of the Russian segment in the future until the arrival of the Nauka multipurpose laboratory module to be launched next year from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The International Space Station is uh, about to cross uh, the northern coast of Africa over Libya, soon to pass over the Mediterranean, no, no, no. and then over Greece, just south of Athens. You know, there is the wire inside the wire, so it all. That's why it was very hard to pull aside. I am holding it. It's great. Three knots here. Now we will have actually to secure the new panel. Okay, so I release the old tether, correct? What tether are you talking about? No, no, not yet. We have one more tether, and we will secure it. Okay, don't don't release it yet. No, we need two points of uh, uh, contact, so to say. Yep. Yes, I have released. It's here. You know, Sergey, you can actually um, hook the readjustable tether uh, to the handrail of the container, so it is not uh, in the way for you. So which one tether you're talking about? Which one adjustable? EV1. You have adjustable tether that you are holding with your left hand. You can secure it uh, to the uh, airtight com container uh, hand uh, handrail on the upper or on the lateral one. Yes, I, I have uh, secured it there. It is a new one. Uh, we will have use of it later. The panel should be secured with a tether, guys. You're in the wrong configuration. And the second contact point should be inaudible. Now you can let the tether go. It will be just uh, connected with the wire. The panel should be on the wire and on the tether, guys. There should be two uh, points of uh, contact there. Unintelligible. I am ready to open the cover. Go 
Moscow, is it a go to open the cover? Yes, uh, you can open the door of the airtight container. Copy in work. One lock is open. The other lock is open. So one is open. Both locks are open. Okay, it's to go to open the door of the airtight container. Unintelligible. Yeah, let's open the door. It wouldn't budge. But the locks are off, correct? Yes, the, the lock is off. And latch is open. Well, maybe it is the bolt is still holding it. On my side, uh, they are free. I suggest. Sergey, inaudible. Guys. Yes. Guys. Look, along the perimeter of the door, <laughs> Moscow, how do you copy us, EV1? <laughs> По периметру, по периметру. Guys, there are a few bolts along the perimeter. Please check that they all are they, they're all free. Unintelligible. What kind of a head size is needed here? Let me check. Guys, go ahead, Moscow. The bolts on the flange are not unscrewed, right? They are still screwed in. Yes, they are still screwed in. So we will have a short comb drop out very soon. Uh, 
Uh, Guys, how do you copy us on the ground? Yeah. We copy you loud and clear. So on the door of the airtight container, there are 17. This is Mission Control Houston, having passed the two-hour, one-minute mark into uh, today's spacewalk. Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kudsverchkov continue work uh, to install a replacement uh, fluid regulator unit on the Zarya module of the International Space Station. Uh, today's spacewalk also uh, accomplished the validation of the Poisk uh, module as an airlock for future Russian spacewalks through a uh, successful depressurization, repressurization, and uh, leak check on the hatch uh, for the airlock portion of the Poisk module. That uh, leak check, uh, you see the series of steps that were uh, conducted earlier today. The spacewalk actually uh, getting underway at 9.12 a.m. Central Time, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time, with the initial opening of the hatch to Poisk. Unintelligible. EV2, Moscow, you know, in your liquid uh, garment, temperature is only 12. So what is the position of your uh, temperature controller? Maybe you should place it in position zero or maybe one. One will be better, probably.
Иви Тил, Москва. Давай включим опять АСТР. Окей, Леттер, Дэктивейт, АСТР, АСТР. You know, put the switch, uh, the uh, temperature control switch in the neutral position, and ISR that it does not impact anything, so let us leave it as is. So, Sergei, can you uh, tell us what the position of your temperature control uh, switch right now? Inaudible. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, ten minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov on the left and right of your screen, respectively, uh, flying over Mongolia as they take a moment uh, to catch their breath. Uh, in front of uh, Ryzhikov is the container uh, with the uh, new fluid regulator unit that uh, they are in the process of working uh, to install to replace an older unit that has been in the Zarya module since uh, it was launched as the first element of the International Space Station 22 years ago. Uh, guys, as you, uh, you probably understand that we have a, a tag up here on the ground uh, discussing the issue. Yes, they are uh, the size of the bolts is 14. 
Один, два, один. На крышке КВД. Yes, you can see here the KVD cover. There are 12 there, 12. The ones that are uh, securing uh, the uh, housing. Guys, go ahead, Moscow. We have a suggestion to try to unfasten this bolt in the following way. So you will have the wretched range, and uh, there is, it has the um, handle that can be removed, and between the handle of the uh, wretched range and between the cover, try to install it uh, there and uh, try to get this bolt off. You know, this handle wouldn't go into in inside here. Not accessible enough. Maybe the wing nut should be removed um, at this time so that it is not an, uh, does not create an additional impediment there. Stand by one. You know, to tell the truth, um, it, uh, it won't succeed, this idea. Copy. You know, let's give it another try together. Of course, it's not very easy to do it uh, only by you. You know, if uh, I can try to adjust the head somewhere on the boat, that's the main problem. 
course, you know, there is not enough access here. No joy. You know, we cannot attach to it. It is also there is a half spherical uh, cover here, so it, it um, does not give us enough access. Please put the old panel in its original location. Copy. Let's pull it up a little bit and hook, up, hook it up too, and maybe we can get a better position from the gap spanner. Kind of long. And a little bit closer. Sure. And a little bit more. Unintelligible. Stand by one. Let me hold it because it's better for me from my side. I got it. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 20 minutes into the spacewalk by uh, Rizhikov on the left and Kud Sverchkov on the right as they uh, are working to properly position uh, this uh, fluid flow regulator unit on the Zarya module, uh, trying to overcome a bit of a balky bolt holding the older unit in place. Got it? Yes. Uh -huh. 
Карабин надо за два порядка, что ли? Сейчас я перескажу. Держишь? Что делаешь? Карабин надо перекипить. Хорошо. Now we need to change the position of the hook. Are you holding it tight? Yes. And guys, the sun is coming out in a few minutes. Copy. The International Space Station passing out over the Northwest Pacific Ocean, moving from northwest to southeast. In this uh, orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Again, this is the first uh, task external to the work that was done earlier to validate the uh, pressurization and hatch seal integrity of the Poisk module for use for Russian spacewalks. SM. No, I can't really move further. That's okay. That's enough. Like about so? And I have it secured on my side. Got it? I did. I got it. And let's do the pull test. Pull test. Successful. Connector. Got it? I do. Так, Артем, разъем. Артем? Connector. We are ready to mate it. You have our go. We have it connected. And covered up. Awesome. Do you need us to take any pictures? Because it's a little bit dark here right now. And the connector is secure. Do you want us to cover it up with the MLI flap? Let them check. Masto, how do you copy? We copy. Sorry, guys, I was a little bit distracted. Come again. We have installed it, everything, and, do you, and connected the connector. Do you want us to take any pictures? No. Uh, Sergey, in two and a half minutes, the sun is coming out. And let's start moving back to MRM-1 with the airtight container in tow. We're going to be bringing it back. All right, the connectors are covered up with the MLI. Unintelligible. Guys, right before you remove the airtight container. So, uh, the first task of today's spacewalk, external to the Poisk 
airlock uh, is now complete. The installation of a new uh, fluid flow regulator unit on the Zarya module of the International Space Station to replace an aging unit. Uh, that uh, older unit uh, has been inserted into that cylindrical container, the barrel-shaped container that you see between Sergei Ryzhikov on the left and Sergei Kudzverchkov on the right. It will be brought back inside the Poisk airlock, and that will enable uh, the next task to be undertaken, that being uh, the disconnection of a uh, telemetry antenna uh, at the interface between the Zvezda service module and the Piers docking compartment, the older airlock that has been used to date for Russian-based spacewalks. That uh, telemetry antenna then will be connected to the interface uh, between Zvezda and Poisk, now being used for Russian spacewalks. Is closed. Copy. So the PRV is closed. And we, the two wing crews on my side are tight. Copy. Guys? Go ahead. Just a slight delta from our specialist regarding the PRV valve. You need to... So regarding the as the valve. You need to leave them open. We are going to close them only after they repress. Okay, we copy. As the valve is open, your valve is open. Copy, please stand by.
Все, ребят, приступаем к демонтажу контейнеров с площадки фиксации. Проверяем страховку двумя точками. Pressurize container. Remove it. Air, uh, remove the airtight container from the attachment frame. And put it into the working configuration. Okay, we are opening up the latches. Copy. Left latch is open, right latch is open. And we are putting the lock. We are putting the latches into the working configuration. Copy. And I got the airtight container. I am handing it over to you. Ребят, и в обратной последовательности идем заводить гермоконтейнер ним. Точно. And guys, remove, uh, move it into MRM two. Свои фалы, фалы. Just uh, be very careful with the tethers and with the tethers for the container. Okay, I have it secured. Let me move a little bit farther away. I got the container. With the old uh, fluid uh, regulator unit uh, in that airtight container, uh, Sergei Ryzhikov on the left, Sergei Kud Sverchkov on the right will carry it back to the uh, Poisk airlock to stow it for now. And then we'll get on with the second uh, task for the day, the uh, repositioning of a telemetry antenna, disconnecting it from the Piers docking compartment, which no longer will be used as an airlock for Russian spacewalks and uh, installing it uh, at the interface between the Zvezda service module and the Poisk airlock being used today for the first time for Russian EVAs. We are now two hours, 35 minutes into this spacewalk, the 232nd in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades and the eighth out of the International Space Station this year. Okay, I have moved, and I'm handing it over to you. Got it. And I have moved the gap banner and attached it. And the shortcut. And I have the kit attached to the gap spanner, and I continue my movement.
Tony Rufok. And I'm. I've got the kit. Сергей второй. Сергей. Сергей. Сергей, ну давай поставь кран тепло холодную там в первую и вторую. All right for the warm cold. Температура растет. Handle, please. Put it in the manual position. Because we see the temperature increasing. All right. Let me translate and I'll do it. And I'll need to move to the gap scanner too. Yeah, go ahead. All right, the hook is connected to the gap spanner. We see that. And the long one is on the handrail. Short one is on the second handrail for translation. And the kit is on the handrail. I got it. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 40 minutes into today's spacewalk, as Sergei Ryzhikov on the left and Sergei Kud Sverchkov on the right wrangle the uh, container with the old discarded uh, fluid flow regulator taken from the Zarya module and replaced with a new unit. They're uh, moving it back uh, to the Poisk module to be stowed before they press ahead with the other work on tap for today. All right, and I can attach myself here to this handrail, and you can hold it for a second, it's going to be better. So the same frame on the translation handrail as previously, not very convenient. Oh, wait. Hold on. You got your head caught up there. Stand by. Hold on. Okay, now you fit through. Okay. Сергей, so what is that pesky frame? Well, it's like this um, tri triangle like triangular frame that the handrail is attached by, so you have to really finagle your way around it. It's the one that is like. 
triangle. So if you are at the very edge and very close to that frame, uh, the hook connects there really good. I am on the handrail for DC1, and I got the kit. Copy. We see it. And I'm moving along the gap spanners. you are. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, a correction to this particular task with the fluid flow regulator. Uh, the two cosmonauts were unable to open that airtight container containing the uh, replacement fluid flow regulator because of a balky bolt. It sounded uh, from the uh, conversation with the Russian flight controllers that they had been able to overcome that, but they did not. So the Russian flight control team instructed the two cosmonauts to abort the task, and uh, they're bringing that container back inside Poisk, leaving the uh, old fluid flow regulator, which is still operative uh, inside the uh, Zarya module. So again, this task has been aborted uh, for the two cosmonauts because of their inability uh, to open up the uh, container housing uh, the new fluid flow regulator. Hold on, let me move as well. They have transferred to an arm two. And the kit? Did you get it? Yes. And I will continue translating along uh, the handrails.
This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 47 minutes into the uh, spacewalk. You see uh, Sergei Ryzhikov in the foreground and Sergei Kud Sverchkov with the blue stripes on his suit. And in between them is the uh, container that they were unable to uh, get open that houses the uh, replacement fluid flow regulator unit for the Zarya module. The intent had been uh, to replace an older unit in Zarya, which is still operating with this new unit, but they were unable to uh, open that container because of a stubborn bolt. After uh, almost an hour of trying, uh, Russian flight controllers of the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow instructed them to stand down from this work. It will be revisited on a future spacewalk, and uh, the new fluid regulator unit uh, will be stowed inside uh, the Russian segment of the space station for the time being. That task has been aborted. I got it. I got it. Inaudible. Copy. Thanks. I got it. It's ready. Two, two, two. I got it. Okay, I hand it over to you. I got it.
ребят, был короткий перерыв. Guys, we had a quick handover, and we're moving towards the EV hatch, correct? Uh, yes, we are on plane three now, and moving towards that now. Copy. And uh, we will have to rehook the hooks here on the shortcut handrails. Copy. And, uh, Sergey, make sure you position yourself in such a way that it's uh, convenient for you to do the uh, transit B antenna uh, uh, unit operation. And Sergey 1 will be on its own. Why? And how much? This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 53 minutes into today's spacewalk by Sergey Ryzhikov and Sergey Kud Sverchkov. Uh, to recap, uh, the two cosmonauts uh, spent uh, uh, part of the time this morning, uh, depressurizing and repressurizing and conducting leak checks to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. That uh, all designed to verify uh, the integrity of Poisk to be used as an airlock for future Russian spacewalks, replacing the Piers docking compartment that has been in use uh, since uh, 2001 as both a docking port and an airlock for Russian EVAs. Poiska now will serve that role until the arrival next year of the multipurpose laboratory module to be launched on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The uh, spacewalk today began at 9.12 a.m. Central Time, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time. Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, moved a, a container to the Zarya module of the International Space Station, within which uh, was a new fluid regulator uh, component uh, to help uh, the flow of fluids and the plumbing system of Zarya. However, after uh, working uh, with a bulky bolt uh, for some period of time, the two cosmonauts were ordered to abort that task. They could not get the container open with the replacement unit. And so they're in the process of stowing the unit back inside Poisk. The older fluid regulator unit in Zarya is still operating uh, and uh, working just fine. Uh, it was to be replaced with the new unit, but that uh, task will be put off until a future date. The next uh, task on uh, the timeline for the crew after they stow this container uh, will be uh, to make their way uh, towards the interface uh, that you see just uh, on the lower left-hand corner of your screen uh, between Poisk and the Zvezda service module. They'll disconnect a telemetry antenna and reconnect it uh, at the uh, interface between Poisk and the service module, disconnecting it from the interface between peers and the Zvezda service module. That uh, being one of the first tasks associated with the decommissioning of the Poisk, I'm sorry, the Piers module, the Piers docking compartment will be decommissioned and the removal of that telemetry antenna uh, from uh, the interface between Piers and Zvezda and its reconnection to the interface between Poisk and Zvezda will be the first in a series of steps that will uh, lead uh, to uh, the decommissioning of Piers that will be uh, uh, dismantled, uh, unberthed, and uh, deorbited next year in advance of the launch of the multipurpose laboratory module. I'm moving in with uh, my head first. So, um, Artyom, do we have to uh, wipe anything here? No, uh, you reported that everything was uh, clean, so you don't have to do that copy. Yeah. 
still in New York. EV1 in the room too. Once again, as we approach the three hour mark into the uh, spacewalk, that first task uh, to replace that fluid regulator unit in the Zarya module was aborted when uh, the cosmonauts were unable to open up uh, the container housing uh, the new unit, the replacement unit. They tried uh, to pry it open, uh, uh, but a bulky bolt uh, intervened, uh, making it uh, impossible uh, for the cosmonauts to open. So uh, that uh, new unit is being uh, reinstalled in the Poisk module in that container that you see, after which the two cosmonauts will press ahead with the other work on plan uh, for the rest of today's spacewalk. Yes, I did that. So I will turn off the thermal control system. Then let me hand it over to Sergey, and I will do it then. Uh, yes, uh, you can set it to position two, for example. Okay, stand by. I will uh, turn off the thermal control system. Well, let it run. It does not really uh, influence anything. So. Just move the switch manually. And you can just move the temperature control handle. Okay, it is set to two. Okay, so should we bring the kit inside? Are you going to leave this hook outside here? I uh, just attached one of them. And okay, go ahead and get the uh, short one. Okay, so I have I have one. No, I mean, I mean your uh, hooks. Okay. Okay, let me uh, transfer the short one here. So it's not in the way. I'm ready, and I'm handing it over. I got it. Okay, I got it. Okay, so let me rehook it. Rehook my tether. This is hook two. Okay, so uh, go ahead and give it to me. Okay, I got it. So the, the long long tether is now attached to the uh, hook of the kit. Is that correct? No. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, let me unhook this one. Well, I guess it would be better to unhook this instead. And put it there. Okay, got it. And the second one, too. Both hooks are now secured. Uh, I guess the long one 
got caught up. Yes, I see it. Okay, let me uh, go ahead and try it again. The pressurized container is inside, correct? Yes, correct. Copy, yes. Where should it be attached? On the short tether. Сергей, первый. Сергей, первый. Да. Go ahead. Up above your left hand there is a strap. What is that? A strap? Well, I guess this is the well, the whole of the uh, power module, I guess, or whatever it's called. Do, do you mean it came off? Yes, the one that's loose. So the plastic overlay on the for the inner ring. Okay, copy. So it is uh, positioned here and uh, secured together. The handrail here. And uh, uh, I guess we'll need to uh, tether it here. Well, it should be tethered to uh, the short tether. Well, if you yes, if you get it from uh, over here. Uh, could you please tell us if uh, Krylog back is tethered now? It is tethered uh, onto the circular handrail. 6024 copy. And this is 160 tether, right? And, and does it have a second attachment point? No, not yet. Okay, copy. So you can use the strap on the outside of the crewlock bag. So you can use that and wrap it around your short tether. I don't think it's going to hold it. Yes, I understand that. So we're going to use RAT uh, to um, tether it. Small one? Okay, look. That strap should go around your uh, short tether, and then you will uh, attach it to the D-ring, and then uh, uh, after that, you're going to have a closed loop. Well, I'm going to be holding crew lock bag. So Sergey is holding it now, but then I'll get out. Okay, all right. I'm going to uh, secure it temporarily. Yes, copy. It's just that one um, restraint point is not sufficient. One tether point is not sufficient for translation. Okay, copy. I will... Um, do it all now. Copy. Guys, do you need a break? We have a scheduled break on the timeline now after these operations. Copy. So we can just proceed without any rush. Copy.
когда второй размещается на кольцевых поручнях, Okay, copy. So translating now. Here is the crew log bag. Once you you are out, we're going to rehook it. Okay, so move it closer towards yourself. Okay, and a bit to the the other side. Okay. Log bag is in the way. No, it's fine. So I guess uh, you can close the MLI now, if possible. Yes, I will do it now. Let me break up my tethers first. Okay. It, it would be better to close it off a bit later because it's not really the best uh, place for it right now. Let's proceed with the transit ops. Um, okay. The hook is attached to uh, this short tether of Grulog Bog. Say again. So, the loop should be, it should go around the uh, short uh, tether, and the hook should be uh, attached, the hook of the Equipment tether should be attached. Okay, got it. It's attached to the rat uh, here for now. Okay, copy. It's looped around the short tether. Copy. Fred is unfastened. Number, number two is, mm, this is EV2, and I'm moving uh, towards the circular handrails, a copy. EV1 is moving. Uh, towards the handrail number 6010. Zero, zero. Copy, 6010. If possible, start operations with the transit cable. No, I'm saying that I'm translating over there. I'm not there yet. Say again. This is EV1, and I'm translating towards handrail 6110. We're 6021. Okay, copy now. I uh, didn't uh, hear it the first time you said it.
Okay, so 6111. Yes. And then uh, the next one should be number 69. Okay, so did you... Did you tether it somewhere? Well, yes, the second were handrails. Okay, yes, yes. So should it be like this or upside down? Well, I guess upside down would be better. Okay, so uh, I'm tethered to 6110, the handrail 6110, and I'm now retrieving the transit from the cable bundle, so I guess we need to uh, put a red on it. And it is locked in all uh, four points, and you will have to unlock it, remove the pins, and you, will, you, you can use the large, small tether and get all of the uh, pins, locking pins, using that one, and uh, move them away. Okay, copy. So let me get the uh, hook first. And when you will be retrieving the pins, the connectors, you will have to also tether the connector to make sure it does not fly off. Copy. And before unlocking it, do I have to untie anything here? Or, no, you don't have to cut anything uh, there. You just you just use force force to pull it out. Okay, one is out. Copy. Now please move it over onto the other uh, end of the hook, a bit further, and then get it on the next uh, lock and pin. Copy. Okay, uh, I snapped uh, here on the antenna a little bit. With my red. Sergey, if locking pins are, uh, you know, together and uh, they are in the way, uh, you can put them into the uh, lock bag, actually. So do I have enough uh, space here, Evie, to, yes, to the right in, in that position so that I can use my right hand in order to uh, retrieve the locking pin? Okay, so uh, the ones on the uh, hook, I'm putting them into the bag, this is the trash bag. Copy.
через 10 минут у нас наступит тень. Сергей Второй, uh, наблюдаешь трассу, по которой будешь переходить, и... Can you see the, the translation route uh, that you will use in order to work with the cables? You know, I am with my feet towards the route right now. Well, I can see somewhere uh, the plane 64. It's easy to translate over it and also the... Uh, the cable uh, clamp uh, they are uh, com they are quite comfortably located between one and four and three and four yes they are near the DPP panel and the next one uh, is near panel 207, and then the, still the next one near the panel 28. Copy. Okay, so what kind of uh, cable uh, holders? Uh, they are hooks, or what kind of holders uh, are there? Yes, they are hooks. Okay, copy. As far as I understand, they are kind of automatic. EV1. Yes, I'm ready to retrieve. The nearest one, but I don't think that uh, it is a uh, fastener. You, you're talking about the locking pin? No, it is not a locking pin, yes. You know, we cannot see very clearly right now. So the cable from that is coming from the DC, right? It is uh, around the nose cone, not the one where the transit. No, the transit label is behind the panel. So. From the nose, the uh, from the side of the nose fairing, there is kind of a locking pin, but it has a tether connected to it. Could you try and to move camera a little bit so that uh, we can see it? Ten by one. I will complete my activity and then we'll try to show it to you on camera. Okay. Yes, of course. We're standing by. Okay, so three locking pins are already in the trash bag. Copy. And what about uh, pin number four? I am actually... Yes, it is uh, actually a locking pin. You were right. Yes, and behind the uh, MLI flap, there is a connector there. Okay, this is pin uh, locking pin number four. Copy. Сергей, первый. one. I think on your OTA one red is somehow uh, not very well secured. Yes, I can see that. It's kind of, kind of moving around. While I was translating, I snagged on the antenna, so I had to go down to it. And to tell you the truth, 
Хорошо, давай возьмем паузу. Uh, you know, uh, I do not uh, know uh, how to unsnag uh, all this mess. Okay, so let's uh, take a pause uh, here, and uh, you will be able to figure it out. Okay, so this red, where is it coming from? The one that is... Uh, this is Mission Control Houston. You're looking... Uh, through the helmet camera affixed uh, to Space Station Commander Sergei Ryzhikov's Orlan spacesuit helmet. A good view of uh, Sergei Kud uh in the Orlan suit with the blue stripes as they work their way through the next task in uh, today's spacewalk menu, that being the disconnection and reconnection of a uh, telemetry cable. The uh, cable has linked the Zvezda service module to the Piers docking compartment for its use as a spacewalk airlock for the past 19 years since Piers uh, was delivered to the International Space Station's Russian segment. That cable being disconnected and repositioned to connect at the interface between Zvezda and the Poisk module being employed today for the first time as a, uh, an airlock for future Russian spacewalks until the arrival next year and outfitting of the new multipurpose laboratory module, the Naoka, that will launch on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Poisk's uh, use uh, was validated earlier today uh, through the depressurization and repressurization and the inspection of hatch seals. The uh, spacewalk began uh, three hours, 25 minutes ago at 9.12 a.m. Central Time, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time. The only, uh, the only glitch so far was the inability of the two cosmonauts to open up a container housing a new uh, fluid uh, regulator unit that was to have been installed in the Zarya module of the International Space Station to replace an older unit. That unit uh, is operating normally, but was to have been replaced with a new unit. Unfortunately, the cosmonauts could not get the container open because of a bulky bolt. So that uh, task was aborted and will be rescheduled uh, at a later date. Okay, so I let that one go. And I secured it. Okay, now it goes underneath here. Stand by one. Don't move much. I think, is everything fine now? Yes, it's, it's okay now. Unintelligible. It's a very nice location.
uh, about the connectors. Come again, connectors. Well, let me move here. Let me turn around. Thank you so much, uh, Sergei, too, for your assistance. Have you untangled? Yes, or disentangled everything. Now I am in the area of the uh, bundle. Copy. So now you will have to unfasten the controller and hand it over connector correction and hand it over to EV2. Copy in work. Unintelligible. The connector is behind, beneath the bundle, right? Uh, behind the reflector. Yes, that's correct. It's where you uh, removed the locking, the last locking pin. Copy. The last locking pin actually is was left on the connector itself. Yes, yes, that's right. What about the bundle? Um, you know how um, rigid is it? I, I don't think it is very rigid. Okay. Well, it actually is quite flexible, although a lot of time passed, but it is still flexible. Okay, copy. You know, the connector should be somewhere in the area of uh, your right hand. Yes, I can see it, actually. Can I retrieve it? Yes, it's a go. Retrieve the connector and the cable uh, bundle also and uh, um, hand it over to EV2. Stand by one. First, I have to stand by one. First, I have to retrieve the locking pin. Will you be able to reach it from here, EV1? Unintelligible. So I will show this locking pin. I retrieved the locking pin and it is now in the fresh bag and I am retrieving the connector. The connector is out. Okay. 
unintelligible. Yes, have you secured it? Unintelligible. Okay, so it's for the cutter. I don't know. Yes, from that side. Yes, it is. Secure it here with thread. This is Mission Control Houston. This view from a balcony camera overlooking the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow where Russian flight controllers are watching uh, the work of Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei kud Sverchkov outside of the uh, Poisk module airlock of the International Space Station. They're currently working to uh, disconnect a telemetry cable uh, that uh, is mated between the uh, Zvezda service module, which is the telemetry and nerve center for the Russian segment of the station, and uh, the piers docking compartment, which has been used in the past as the airlock from which Russian spacewalks have been staged, and uh, to reconnect it to a similar interface panel uh, between Zvezda and the Poisk module, which now is in play as the new airlock for Russian spacewalks. An earlier task to uh, replace an older uh, fluid regulator unit on the Zarya module of the station uh, with a new unit uh, was not uh, accomplished because the crew uh, could not uh, open up the container housing the new fluid regulator unit. They tried uh, to pry uh, the container open, uh, but a bulky bolt uh, would not cooperate, and uh, the Russian flight controllers aborted that task. Uh, the uh, container with the new unit was brought back inside the Poisk module, and uh, that uh, task will be undertaken at a later date. The older unit is working fine, uh, and uh, is in support of uh, fluid um, flow in the Zarya module, uh, but uh, the task to uh, replace it with a new unit uh, was not accomplished earlier today during the spacewalk. EV2, I suggest you translate towards plane number one until the panel 28 and EV1 will be following you and uh, we'll use the cable holder. Well, actually, I am near the panel 28 already. Copy. There is this uh, shortcut um, handrail. I will jump over it. Yes, it's a gap spanner. Go to the Yes, you have to uh, go over it. Yes, it is done. I can see uh, platform number seven. Well, let me see what will be the best way to work with it. EV2, stop for a while. First, uh, EV1 uh, is uh, catching up with you. Actually, I can work with the cable on the platform 28. The cable is long enough. Uh, yeah, but uh, let's pull it so that it is tight. Okay, I have an issue with the wretched wrench on the cable holder. EV1 is near the cable holder of MRM2 right now, Moscow. 
подход, и now we understand. Там не надо подвязывать, у нас там задел. You don't have to tie anything up. You can secure it on a sum right away, correct? Yes. You can secure it on a sum right away. Copy, so I will uh, secure it uh, back. Tighten it again. Well, if you have uh, unfastened it, actually, you can, you could have retrieved it. I've already retightened it. Okay. The view from uh, the helmet camera of Sergei Kud Sverchkov, a native of Baikonur, Kazakhstan, as the International Space Station flies 260 statute miles over northern Kazakhstan at this hour. Kud Sverchkov and uh, Sergei Rizhikov, the station commander, now approaching the three hour, 40 minute mark into today's spacewalk as they continue uh, to reposition a telemetry cable uh, that. Uh, is being removed from the interface between the Zvezda and Piers uh, modules for its uh, reconnection to a similar interface panel uh, that will connect it to uh, the Poisk Zvezda service module interface. And we will switch tethers uh, and then we will try to pass it to each other. So stand by one. So that it is possible to reach. Yes, it is at your own discretion. Of course, you know, it is too dark to see. Well, by the way, stand by one. Stand by one. I will have a better look here because there is one um, thing that might help. So this connector, Artyom, this transit connector, is it under a separate? A flap or um, uh, some uh, other flap. The transit connector is beneath the separate flap. Because there are two connectors, a high frequency, as far as I understand, each of them is under a separate flap. Yes, there are two high-frequency connectors. So which one of them? The one that is closer to plane four? You, you do not see any labeling on it. There are no uh, labeling on flap. There is two Roman figure there, but you know, it's uh, the access is so un uh, uncomfortable, I just won't be able to reach to it. And what about the uh, patch panel? Look at the patch panel. There should be pepper pass 7 uh, in uh, paint. The, this marking should be there. Okay, let me see how I whether I can do it at all for they cannot reach here at all. Сейчас можешь повторить, пожалуйста, про этот разъем, потому что помехи большие и сложно разобрать. Can you repeat the 
information uh, about the connector. Okay. I am trying to get to those uh, flaps. Yeah. No, no, Joy okay. cannot uh, okay. get to them as yet. You know, I can reach with my stand, but uh, it is not enough uh, to work with them. Yeah, let me try from the other side. Okay, I have secured myself in Audible. On the circular uh, handrail of the SM, uh, I am tethered now. It's EV1. Come again about the circular handrail. It's a plane three. On the cable holder of the circular handrail, I have tethered and I am now moving towards uh, EV2. Copy, proceed, translating towards uh, EV2. Guys, there will be sh short dropouts in calm. Copy. All right, that's great. Unintelligible. All right, most likely I will have to go from the side of the DC-1. I can't re really reach it like this. Okay, guys, we are not receiving any video. Could you just tell us and report what's going on? Sergey is approaching me. He's moving in my direction. And 
We are attaching it with the cables. So, so that we could secure it well. I have a suggestion, guys. Let's first get it as close to the connector as possible, and only then attach it. That's a no-go. All right. We'll attach it to the handrail, and it shouldn't be in the way. Our specialists are telling us that the old panel is working fine. Oh, that's good news. with some change. Ten. We need to pull it up. Is it tight? Yes. Maybe we didn't need to run it through here. Although I don't think there is a different option. Maybe we could have reached it like this. Well, if we can't reach, maybe that's uh, then we will just disconnect the. Disconnected. Okay, and maybe we can, like, the clamps, and then maybe we can move it up a little bit. Okay, I got it. All right, let's uh, move it here. And you need to move as much as possible forward. And I will move to the to DC one as far as possible as where. Over there. So, and you'll be walking over there. Yes, that's what I'm doing. There we go. Hey guys, how do you copy? Pretty well. And I won't be able to hop over this one here, probably. Sergey, stand by. Don't move right now. I'm not sure if I'll be able to reach. I need to be a little bit closer. Well, maybe the anchor can, can be of some help. Okay. 
Якорь на ВУ. І тоді... The anchor is going to be here. Okay. Right, that's where we have the anchor. And EV2 is on DC1, so that unintelligible. All right, I will have to get to that position from the side of the boom. Do you want to move along the boom? No, from the side of the boom. Would you not be able to uh, get through on my side? No, my head doesn't fit. Do you think, uh, let me do it. So, FP7. Right? Yes. But 7. Not the plate itself. From that side, do you see the connectors? Do you think they are marked? I'm 
only reaching to the MLI flap. I opened it, but that's as far as I can, can get. I can't reach the connectors. So I should probably move to the boom. Right, I'm moving to the boom. I think I will reach it. So, I am secured. Copy. I am secured with the second hook. All right. No rush here. Okay, I get it. Guys, just a couple of minutes till the sun comes out. Right. That ring handrail. Circle handrail. And now I need to turn around to actually do something. Hey. Sergey, could you please check that I'm not getting caught on anything and I'm not breaking anything here? Right, like so. Okay, if you want, do I understand you correctly that you are somewhere near the antenna? Just be careful there, all right? Copy, of course. Could you make sure that I'm not trampling over anything here? No, no, you're fine. Just that I see. This is Mission Control Houston, four hours, two minutes into today's spacewalk by Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov. They continue to work uh, in the neighborhood of the Poisk module of the International Space Station, having disconnected a telemetry cable from the interface between uh, the Zvezda service module, which is the telemetry center for the Russian segment, and the Piers docking compartment which uh, is now in the early stages of being decommissioned in favor of the interim use of Poisk as an airlock for Russian spacewalks and, of course, uh, will be replaced uh, as a spacewalk venue once the new multipurpose laboratory module is launched next year by the Russians. That's the name of the connector. The uh, telemetry cable was disconnected from the interface panel between Zvezda and Piers and is in the process of being reconnected to a similar panel uh, to the Poisk module. This uh, activity coming in the wake of uh, the cosmonauts' inability to open up a container housing a new fluid, uh, fluid uh, flow regulator uh, that uh, had been earmarked for installation in the Zarya module of the International Space Station. The two cosmonauts tried to unbolt 
the lid to the container and were unable to do so, the old fluid flow regulator is operating just fine inside uh, the Zarya module, no problem there. So no urgency to get this task done, the original task, the first of the tasks uh, in today's lineup of activities for the two cosmonauts outside as you look uh, at the view from the helmet camera of Space Station Commander Sergei Ryzhikov. That uh, fluid flow regulator replacement will be earmarked uh, for a future spacewalk uh, by the Russian side. Cable connector. After uh, this telemetry cable is connected uh, between Zvezda and Poisk, Russian uh, flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karolyov will take a look at uh, the rest of the tasks on the plan for today. Uh, and uh, we'll provide additional words to the cosmonauts about how far we plan to get with the rest of today's spacewalk activity. Well, as far as I understand, the tag, the original tag, is on DC-1. Okay, the best way to do it is to move it as far as possible away so that the cable would have been a little bit tight and then attach it with a wire tie underneath of the handrails so that we don't have any abnormal situations later. Of course. All right, we got it. Can you tie it up here? Well, it will be tight. That's all. Okay. Let me let me tie this down real quick. Okay, fine. Can I escape me? All right, the cable, the transit cable for DC-1 has been attached to DC-1. Right uh, underneath the RSC and Air Gear sign, the logo. We copy, thank you. And... Okay, we have the connector. FS72. All right, here we go. Got it. Is it long enough?
All right, I have checked out the connector. And there is no damage, and it's clear of any FOD. All right, it's tight here. Okay, we have the connector. All right, so the connector FF7-2 is connected to 7-2. So we have the connector, and we have it covered up. All right, Sergey, please remove the plate. We connect the patch panel. And move the cable and secure it if possible. Well, the cable is secured with two cable holders. So, um, and one is should be near panel 28. It is there. They are there. So they are tight everywhere, right? You don't need to tighten it or anything? No, we don't. It's really tight. Okay, then, Sergey, translate to EVA ladder. Copy. Okay, I have the camera on. I'm trying to get some video for you, but the MLI flap is all is like it's curling up, so it's not an easy task. Хорошо, Сергей. Ну как получится снять, так получится. Whatever you can do. Just uh, make sure it is uh, secured with the wire tie. It would be great if you could record the Im the video for it. Okay. And how are you guys? Do you need any help before the next activity? Uh, do you need any a break before the next activity? No. I am translating. Copy. All right, then move on to SNP. Four zero seven. All right, we are closing the MLI and the connector with the MLI. The cap. Um, it's a little bit difficult. Come again. We didn't quite copy. I'm just saying that the cap for the connector, I did not connect them because it's a little bit difficult to get to them. That is fine. It's not a problem. All right, I am closing the flap here. Принято. Copy. И Сергей второй после того как закончил переходи тоже к 
Sergey, once you are done, please move over to the bracket with the connectors, too. I copy. I'm still fighting with that. Clap. And I have moved over to the CVA letter. Do you see that bracket? Yes. I do see it. And the transportation tether is attached there. Is that right? Yes, it is there. Copy. Then, please secure it with your tether and start with the disassembly. Copy. I am done with the flap. And I'm going to attach the secured connector to it. This is Mission Control Houston, four hours, 16 minutes into today's spacewalk by Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov. They have now completed the uh, task of uh, repositioning a telemetry cable uh, that uh, was hooked up to a uh, interface panel between the piers docking compartment and the Zvezda service module that was disconnected and then relocated to a similar uh, interface panel with the Poisk module from which uh, today's spacewalk was conducted. Uh, the first time that Poisk has been used as an airlock for Russian spacewalks. An earlier task uh, to replace a fluid flow regulator unit in the Zarya module of the International Space Station could not be completed uh, because uh, the container uh, housing uh, a new unit uh, could not be opened. And so the old uh, fluid uh, flow regulator unit remains in play in the Zarya module, operating fine. Uh, the task uh, to replace it with a new unit will be deferred to a future date. The uh, Russian side is estimating about uh, six hours for today's spacewalk, so uh, the two cosmonauts will now press on to the next task, that being the removal of a connector assembly housing some material science experiments from the exterior of the Piers docking compartment to be brought back inside uh, for later uh, analysis. So the uh, two cosmonauts continue to press ahead, uh, now having completed the uh, relocation of that telemetry cable from the Piers docking compartment to the Poisk module. Okay, it is now attached and secured. Okay, guys, do you read me? Yes, we do. We made the decision to move over towards the um, aft side. Copy. Okay, I'm using the translation aid and I'm moving over to the Nadir part and I keep translating over to the side. 
copy. Ratchet French installed. Copy. Opening the latch. Copy. It is unfastened fully and removed. Copy. And now you will need to tether it to the lock bag. So with the way I'm standing by for Sergey, and I'm, I'm here already, uh, close to you. Okay, so let me move uh, over. And I'm on the EVA letter. Copy. I'm ready to open the crew lock bag, okay? I'm opening it now. Uh, do you think it's going to fit on that side? No, maybe uh, it will uh, fit if we go from the side, from the side of the handle. Okay, got that. Yes, it is quite big. Yes, it is big. So should we use the rat? Do you see the lug here? The eyelet, so we can. Uh, hook on onto it. Okay, let me try it. Okay, guys, and if you can't put it inside, then please attach the wire tie to one of the tether points, and then the second point uh, will be your rat. It is secured with the rat from crew lock bag. Copy. Uh, we're going to try to uh, put it in. Okay. Okay. We need to attach it to the handrail itself, not just the, not the eyelet. We'll have to retrieve the impact tray later on. So should we put it all the way inside then? Is it easier? Well, relative, I guess it's sounds good in theory. Okay, copy that. And we are watching you guys. If you can't restore it quickly, if it's difficult, then uh, you're going to have to secure it uh, outside. Okay, so get that. Okay, stand by, wait. Is it where you want to move it? Yeah. Let's try to get the impact tray out. Guys, you don't have to waste time on it right now because uh, we're going to have to go back so it's once we're, uh, we'll move on to the impact tray operation. And we need to save time right now to make sure that we have energy uh, to move over uh, towards the SMAP side. Copy. And the brackets, the connectors, so one hoop should be attached on the 
будет short tether, and then the second attachment point is that you will have to attach your wire tie to a preload box. This is for Sergey one. Did you copy? We had a quick LOS. Uh, Artem is inside, and the kids are inside and tethered. In the same manner, uh, one is attached to preload bag red, and the other one that's uh, going outside and on towards the handle. So uh, when we were uh, LOS, you managed to put it all inside, correct? Yes. Okay, copy. That's good. Okay, guys. In that case, take a break now. Take a few minutes to rest because it's been intense and you didn't take any breaks. And I'm going to give you the big picture regarding your further operations. Okay. We are ready to copy. So right now, uh, you will move over towards the impact tray, and we will not do the window 8 operations during this EVA. If time allows, at the end, uh, we're going to clean uh, the MR the window of EV uh, hatch of MRM2. And right now you will move on to impact operations. You will remove it, and then you will uh, take photos of gazelle plume deflectors, and uh, you will translate back through plane 3 of the small diameter towards MRM. Copy. Okay, on my go, you will start the translating over there. And please take two to three minutes now to rest. Copy. Uh, so we're going to use the EVA letter and move over towards the SM, translating along the handrails. That's correct. And you will be moving along SM plane one, between planes one and four. Copy. EV2 uh, has begun translation. No, please stand by. Stand down. Please take time to rest. Copy. Resting now. Sergey 1 and Sergey 2, uh, this is medical support team. Yes, go ahead. How are you feeling, guys? EV1 is feeling well, EV2 is feeling well, too. How about the temperature? Uh, Sergei, too. Are you still feeling hot or not? No, it's comfortable temperature. I don't think that uh, it's hot right now. Okay. Thank you very much for your report. Take one more minute to rest and then you will uh, proceed on my go. Copy. Uh, Sergey, one. Uh, could you please show us the look back through your helmet cam? I want to uh, see the configuration of the brackets there. Can you see it? The video is lagging. Could you please move up and closer? Well, unfortunately, I can see uh, how exactly it is tethered, uh, but as far as I understand it from your reports, it is done in a similar way as uh, impact to trade. Yes, correct. 
hook is attached onto the handle. And we look back. Okay, uh, copy, and please start translating now. Who's going to go first? And, uh, well, this is Mission Control Houston approaching the four and a half hour mark into uh, today's spacewalk by Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov with about another hour and a half worth of work on tap for the two cosmonauts outside the Russian segment. This being the first spacewalk conducted out of the Poisk module, which was delivered to the station 11 years ago. The uh, cosmonauts completed the relocation of a telemetry cable connecting piers to the, the piers docking compartment, which has been the spacewalking venue for all Russian spacewalks out of the station since its delivery to the complex back in 2001. That uh, telemetry cable was disconnected uh, between piers and the Zvezda service module and reconnected to the Poisk module. This uh, being the first in a series of steps that will ultimately decommission piers and enable it uh, to uh, be uh, deorbited next year in favor of the new Russian multipurpose laboratory module that will be launched on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Next up uh, will be uh, the two cosmonauts uh, moving in the uh, vicinity of Zvezda to remove and replace a, a tray uh, of witness plates uh, collecting data on micrometeoroid uh, impacts on the surface of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Okay, I'm going to look what works better. Okay. There is a foot restraint here as well, yes. So I'm going to be uh, rehooking my tether and translating like this. Uh, yes. And please don't break this. Yes, you don't need to do that for sure. Once again, uh, the two cosmonauts uh, spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, validating uh, the integrity of the Poisk module as a uh, base for conducting spacewalks out of the Russian segment as they uh, depressurized and repressurized the airlock, uh, inspected uh, the hatch seals on Poisk, which has been used throughout the years as a docking port and now uh, is fully certified to be able to support Russian spacewalks, the first of which is in progress by Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov. Once outside, uh, the spacewalk having uh, begun at 9.12 a.m. Central Time, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time, the two cosmonauts uh, set up uh, their equipment and moved a container housing a new fluid regulator system that was to have been installed in the Zarya module, the first element launched to the International Space Station back on November 20th, 1998, almost 22 years ago to the day. Unfortunately, the two cosmonauts could not open up the lid to the container housing the replacement fluid regulator. And so the old regulator remains in place in Zarya, functioning fine, no problem. The task of replacing it with a newer unit put off until a future spacewalk. The two cosmonauts then repositioned a telemetry cable connecting the piers docking compartment to the Zvezda service module and reconnecting it to a patch panel uh, that uh, enables telemetry to flow between Zvezda and the Poisk module 
now in service as a Russian airlock. Next up uh, for the two cosmonauts, uh, a short uh, trip down to Zvezda, where they will uh, remove and replace a uh, witness plate that has uh, collected uh, data on uh, impacts by micrometeoroids on uh, the surface of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Ivy, would you have uh, translated on the handrail copy? This is EV-1, and then next to the uh, cone cover. Copy. Keep translating. Am, uh, am I going to uh, uh, translate over there and uh, uh, the rest of the inhibited track? Yes, you have my goal. Copy. And what is the recommendation? Uh, How should I move there? There so is a gap spanner there next to, ha uh, to uh, handrail 24 in order ball. And then you will be uh, translating over to handrail 2541 and 2511.
This view from an external camera on the International Space Station showing uh, Sergei Kud Sverchkov at the four hour, 38 minute mark into today's spacewalk, which is the first for him and uh, Space Station Commander Sergei Ryzhikov. The two cosmonauts uh, have made their way back uh, to the large diameter, as it's called, of the Zvezda service module to conduct an inspection back there, take photographs of the uh, surfaces on several of the planes of the uh, service module, and to uh, swap out uh, a tray of uh, witness plates that uh, has collected data on uh, micrometeoroid uh, impacts on the surface of the International Space Station's Russian segment. The uh, cosmonauts uh, repositioned a telemetry cable uh, that connected uh, the piers docking compartment, uh, the original spacewalking airlock for Russian EVAs from the International Space Station. Uh, it, uh, that cable connected piers to the uh, Zvezda service module. It was uh, disconnected and reconnected to a patch panel uh, that now enables the Poisk module uh, to be fully functional as a Russian airlock in uh, concert with telemetry that flows between Poisk and the Zvezda service module. One task uh, that could not be completed was uh, the replacement of a fluid flow unit in the Zarya module because uh, the container in which a new unit was housed could not be opened by the cosmonauts. The new unit brought back inside Poisk, it will be uh, used uh, for uh, a future spacewalk. The uh, current uh, fluid flow regulator unit in Zarya is working fine, so no impact to Russian operations. This is EV2, uh, and I'm also in the large diameter area. Copy. And I'm trying to inspect the perka area. There is an interesting patch right above the word Zvezda. And it's dark in color. I can't really see much. This is nominal. This is standard. OK, I got that. But what I mean is that the area next to the fracture. Uh, uh, Sergey, look. If you're referring to the fracture, we have the following recommendations for you. Uh, please translate uh, to the black handrails. And uh, please locate yourself next to 
handrail 2646. And the assumed fracture location uh, should be above GGU along plane 4. Uh, so we have the following recommendation for you. Move over to handrail 2646. Activate Glacier camera and please film this area as much as you can. And you have uh, not more than five minutes to complete this. Copy. And at the same time, you don't need to tether yourself and move over to plane four. Copy. The two cosmonauts, uh, while back uh, in the vicinity of the large diameter, as it's called, uh, of the Zvezda service module, uh, retrieved a uh, connector bracket uh, tray that uh, houses uh, some material science samples. And again, uh, now uh, while they're taking uh, photographs of the aft end of the service module, uh, are in the process of uh, retrieving a couple of uh, trays of material science experiments, as well as uh, a tray of experiments called IMPACT, uh, which collects data on micrometeoroid uh, impacts on the surface of the Russian segment of the station. Copy. Activating Glister camera. Copy. The camera is on. Sergey, too, could you please push me, uh, push me backwards? Well, I first need to to reach to you. And by one. You know, the most important thing is it doesn't uh, kink. Okay, I am performing the video shooting with the camera. I will be holding you. Yeah, you know, it's Velcro here, and it got uh, attached, and it's uh, very tightly attached, very good Velcro. This view from Sergei Ryzhikov's helmet camera as the space station flies 260 miles over the uh, Amazon, just south of uh, Manaus, Brazil, moving from southwest to northeast. Four hours, 46 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Sergey, please, I'm waiting for you to push me a little bit. Well, let me translate a little bit higher. Okay, so will you be able to, to do the shoot? Yes, I am actually taking video right now. Is the area of this panel, Moscow, it is rather some remnants of old something. You, you have to shoot a little bit higher than the first letter Z. Okay, the first letter. The first letter. Somewhere in the area of this first letter Z, or maybe a little bit higher, but uh, it's just approximate estimation. So behind the antenna, you know, I do not see anything suspicious here. So I should have uh, changed out my 
hope to change them places, but yeah, you need time for that. Okay, guys, so let us continue. The time is up. I am deactivating the camera. Copy. Should I just hold a little bit longer so that it deactivates? Now it is off. Copy. So go to play number one of AO, assembly compartment. EV1 is in the area of Gazoo, uh, plume deflector, the handrail 2613, 2614. Copy. Please proceed to 2615 and 16. And, uh, EV2 will replace you at your current location. So I will have to uh, demate the crew lock back from the short tether. Yes, that's correct. Let's do the change out, Sergey. I mean, swap. And uh, this is Sergey, too. I have to work with the short tether and make it closer. Here. Yes, that's correct. All right. Stand by one. Here is the tether with the red. Okay, let me see from which side it is coming out here. Yes, hold the tether itself. No, we have to do it just right. I need, uh, you know, to first use the short one, then the long one. Okay, the crew lock bag is on EV2. Sergey, can you switch the tether here? Maybe you should uh, move with your feet in the different direction. You mean just uh, turn 180 degrees? Yes, I understand, but Artem was telling us that the handrail is somewhere from the upper side, because I won't be able to reach the handrail from that side. Un unintelligible. You know, you don't need to uh, to take the long one, because I'm holding it with my left hand and am transferring it 
Так, я что-то не понял. У меня в глазах есть такая. You know, something is um, in my eyes. I cannot understand anything. Uh, I mean, I cannot see very clearly. Uh, will you be able to reach it here? Yes, I think so. You know, the short one is in the way here, too. It uh, prevents you from reaching out. You know, there is the, is it the handrail here, or what is it? Probably not. 27.13 is the handrail, right, Artem? Stand by one, guys. Next to the unit 12, 27.13, you on the uh, edge, you mean? Yes, that's right. Yes, it is a sand rail and you can secure the tether there. Okay, sounds good. Рядом с ним еще 27-12. There is 27-12 next to it, and I think it's like Baba Pearl. It's not very easy to hop over it here. Unintelligible. Well, it is too short. In six minutes, guys, uh, we will enter the eclipse. You know, I'm not sure I will be able to secure myself here. Okay, so I have completed this maneuver. Now, the short one should be transferred. No, no, uh, Sergei, too, it doesn't have to be transferred. So, that's great. So, what we do now? We are, first of all, guys, you remove the first impact tray for this purpose. Before that, you will have to secure it so it doesn't flow away. Uh, should we use red for this? Yes, exactly. Red tether should be secured to the impact tray that you will have to remove later. Maybe I should switch the hooks and the short one with the cook uh, make with it closer. So that's, I, I, sh I think I should rehook here. So when you start uh, retrieving the protective cover, you also will have to secure it with the red. And then you will have to uh, also use the reds from Krulog bag. Okay, copy that. This is Mission Control Houston as we approach the five hour mark into uh, today's spacewalk. The two cosmonauts, Sergei Ryzhikov on the left uh, with the Orlan suit uh, and the red stripes, and Sergei Kud Sverchkov on the right with the blue stripes have just uh, retrieved uh, a witness plate uh, from the exterior of the Zvezda service module that uh, has measured and collected data on micrometeoroid impacts on the surface of the Russian segment of the station. 
Это внизу поднимать, пока в тиге в этом цвету. The uh, two cosmonauts are on the home stretch of today's spacewalk that began at 9.12 a.m. Central Time, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time, repositioning uh, a telemetry cable uh, that connected uh, the pier's docking compartment with the Zvezda service module to a similar uh, connection point uh, that now uh, links the Poisk module being used today for the first time as a spacewalking airlock to Zvezda. The uh, two cosmonauts also uh, retrieved a uh, collection plate uh, of material science experiments that uh, have been uh, working on the outside of the uh, Zvezda service module, were unable earlier in the EVA to uh, replace a fluid flow regulator for the Zarya module of the International Space Station uh, because they were unable to open up the container housing a replacement unit. So that uh, was brought back inside the Poisk module airlock. It uh, will be uh, assessed and that task rescheduled for a later spacewalk. No impact to the operation of the Zarya module. Can I uh, remove the old tray? No, not stop. You have to first put the protective cover on it before removing. Okay, let me retrieve the cover. Here you go. A little bit closer. Yes, I have it. It is on red. Yes. That's why it was very not very easy for me to give it to you. Okay. No, don't let it uh, go. I'm holding it. Okay, I have it on. Great. So I will uh, put a little bit more slack in here. That's great. Before you install the cover, you should check that the latch is in the position open. Guys, this is Moscow. The latch is in the open position. Copy. Now install the protective cover on the impact. Okay, so I've secured this with a Velcro and covered. Copy. Now you will have to remove the impact tray number one. First of all, untie the wire tie. In work. Sergey, this wire tie, is it tied to the handrail of the impact itself or to the handrail of the vessel? 
uh, it is tied to gazel, no, 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 correction, correction, to the handrail of the impact tray. Copy. Then do not remove it, please, but just uh, leave it on the uh, plate on the tray. Okay, copy. So the, it is secured with red. And uh, also we use the wing nut. No, you, you have two uh, contact points, one on the cover, and the second is to with the red to the impact handrail. Yes, I uh, confirm two contact points. Now you can work with the ratchet wrench, working with the wing nut. Guys, you've been our side for five hours and two minutes. Copy. Yes. Got it. Мне подсказывают, это не время за бортом, надо сказать, а время ВКД. Well, you know, it, they prompted them here. It's not the outside time. It is the oh, total EVA time. Copy. Now you can secure it here, Sergei. Here, inaudible. I am removing it. So how are we going to, uh, to carry it, Artem? With the use of the uh, tether from the impact itself, and the second contact point will be to the crew look back. So the there is the fastener there. So right now I used to I have to tie it with a wire fastener. Yes. Right now, impact is removed and is on red right now. Okay. Currently, leave it. It's not a good uh, way to do it. You know, uh, it's not a good uh, option to leave it on two reds. I wanted to tell you guys so that to install the new impact and then the equipment tether uh, will be available for the third contact point. I agree. It is close here somewhere. Okay, so let's retrieve the new impact. Uh, it is secured. Yes. Exactly how the old one is secured. The tether should be unraveled. No, no, don't do it. Don't do it. It, it is not tight. No, no. Unintelligible. Uh, 
Артем. Связи. Go ahead. Uh, on the desert handrail, there is the red mark on the right hand side. Next to it, uh, the old impact was installed. So should we install it at the same location or in the center? Yeah, please install it to the location where the previous impact was. 15 centimeters from the edge. It's about uh, the width of a uh, hand. Okay. Now I understand. Yes, it, it will. It will be tight here. All right. Let Let's try with the tether here. in a hurry. You know, I have to use red, uh, but um, it is too tight. You know, you, so your fingers are inside uh, the button here. Beware that I can actually reach with it to you. Okay, stand by one. I will try to use the swing arm here. Gosh. Try to use your left hand. Guys, there will be a short dro home dropout. We are trying uh, uh, to install the impact. Attempts are continuing, trying to uh, have position ourselves in such a way so that we can do it. Once I uh, retrieve it, and uh, no, no, no joy. So this extension here, you know, it has to be uh, in the open position. So you hold it, and I will try to move it. Oriented so that it can be installed. No, not that, not that way. What, like this way? This is better. A little bit closer. Now you can pull it. Is it open? Yes, it is unfastened. And uh, you know, it, it is. It can be installed on the uh, handrail now in this configuration. And this thingy, uh, it is listed here. Uh, 
можно поднять поручень ГЗУ и на поднятой поручень. You can lift the GZU handrail, guys, and you can try to install it on the lifted handrail. Well, it's just one of the simplest operations. Somehow, uh, you know, something is preventing us from doing it. So it's the, no, the spring is compressed, this boat uh, does not touch it here, maybe, you know, it, it, it is compressed too much, you know, it is, a, it is a hard top, okay, so the internal fastener is uh, spring as well. Maybe we should uh, try it uh, in diagonal direction. So the opening is not enough to install it on the handrail. The gap is not enough. Сергей второй. EV2, Сергей 2, go ahead, Artem. Убери, пожалуйста, охлаждение. Там дальше единицы не ставь. У тебя там 9 градусов. Боюсь замерзнуть. Decrease the cooling. I think we hope we are afraid you will freeze. It's just 9 degrees. Copy will do. Now, more or less, the you know the position is now fine. Now. I understand why. Of course, uh, there was some kind of knot, uh, and it got in between. You see? Yes. This is a brown knot here. Yes, I can see that. It has to be unfastened somehow. So it is tight here. Let us try. Yeah, it has to be just uh, got got off with force. No, actually, there is no need. It it has to be just uh, pushed away, and this ring here. Yes, I agree. There you go, I got it. We have the tether installed. Right movement. Move it. One, two. Let me try and turn it. This is Mission Control Houston, five hours, 16 minutes into the uh, spacewalk by Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov as they continue to work to secure a uh, tray of experiments called the IMPACT that uh, measures uh, micrometeoroid debris hits on the surface of the Russian segment of the station. We have it secured. And uh, word now being received that the cosmonauts have, in fact, installed uh, the replacement tray of witness plates for that impact experiment. Don't you think that it's best to be connected with, to tie it down with a wire tie? 
Well, if you think it's the best, you can try this site. Then uh, make sure it's secure and then just remove it. All right, so we have the safety tether. We need to move it to the old one. And then with this one, I'm going to secure the cover. Copy. We copy, crew, and that's exactly how we want you to do it. По поводу транспортировки дальнейшей импакта, следующие рекомендации. So for impact, for moving it. So what are the recommendations are that the cover, the space side of cover, needs to be uh, attached to unintelligible. And the other side should be uh, to the crew log, crew log bag. Okay, one more time. So I have four. Hoops. I'm attaching it to the old one. Be careful. It seems that one of the hooks is not secure. Okay, we have it all secure. The one that uh, is with the crew lock bag. Uh, the old impact is secure there. Okay, like this. Guys, in two minutes we may have a five minute LOS. So do you have our go to jettison the cover, as we have planned? Right, that's what we wanted to say. Just make sure you are in the jettison zone, you identify it, and that's when you jettison the cover. We're not there yet. So just make sure there is nothing in the way, that there are no solar arrays that may be in the way, uh, and the Soyuz is not in the way either. Okay. One more time, could you tell us how do we need to attach the impact? To the handrail? I can attach it. I can attach the old impact to the crew lock bag with the wire tie that is. Or we can use the wire tie that we have for the towel. And it's probably better to use the wire tie that we have the towel attached with. I have the cover removed from the first, for the, from the new impact. We copy.
Sergey, do you need a hand here? No. I'm attaching the impact with a wire tie. And three twists. And there we go. Ready. Right, the impact has been secured. The crew lock bag is closed and secured as well. We copy all. И по моей команде начнем движение в сторону мимо второго. Так, что сделать с стасятом чехлом? А, там, видимо, по мехе связи были. Есть. Повернитесь еще раз, тогда в сторону против вектора скорости. И мне нужна ваша квитанция. Вот так вот видно? Серьезно. Можешь развернуться? Нет, пока не могу. А можешь тогда отойти ко мне, тут поруч не больше? Да. Можешь Слушай, это, это, это правильная мысль. Нечего там болтаться. Да, нечего. Тут мучиться. Подожди, можешь нормально перейти? Потому что я свои коробки переступаю. Нет, 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 не коробки, не трогай. А, хорошо, все. Я сейчас таким же раздеболетом, как сюда. Я понял. Все, так, значит, я двигаюсь в сторону. Окей, so I will do it the same way as before. Right. Not working. Great. Right, so let's use the latitudinal one. Great, and we are tuning. All right, I see the solar rays. Okay, I am. On the longitudinal, and what about the uh, we copy? EV1 and EV2, and what about the jettisoning? Well, I currently still see the solar rays. Okay, I have a suggestion. Talking over each other. Guys, we will get out of the eclipse 
Ребята, у нас тень закончится через минуту. И вместе с полотенцами отбросим единым целым. We suggest to jettison the cover together with the towel. До кольцевых поршней дойдем. Let's just uh, um, get to the handrails right now. Circular handrails. Copy. Circular handrails. EV2, I'm moving along the towards longitudinal. And EV1, I'm right behind you. Ребят, рекомендация по поводу защитного чехла, то что Guys, мы наносим его внутрь. Мы do have recommendation regarding the protective glass. Защитный чехол внутрь, да? We are not jettisoning, jettisoning the cover. We are jettisoning only the towels. We copy. So the cover should go in the bag, right? Yes. EV2, I'm at the gap, thinner, thinner. This is Mission Control Houston, five and a half hours into the uh, spacewalk by Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov. The uh, impact tray of uh, witness plates that measures micrometeoroid debris hits uh, and other data regarding uh, foreign uh, debris hits on uh, the surface of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. That uh, new tray uh, of witness plates has been installed. Some conversation about uh, jettisoning uh, its cover, but that uh, was ruled out by the Russian flight control team. They still have on uh, the pre-EVA uh, plan the uh, likely uh, jettisoning of a couple of towels uh, that the cosmonauts will use to wipe down their Orlon suits before they return to the Poisk airlock the visual inspection um, while you are at the circular handrail. Okay, we copy. I'll move up a little bit to plane three. Two minutes till the end of eclipse. Copy.
So we have 2442 circular handrail. It is kind of going at an angle, and it's marked with some black markings. Can I can I use it to secure myself to? Yes. Okay. EV2. Unintelligible. I have moved towards lane 4. So I have moved towards lane 4. Probably more towards plane three. Is that where we are moving? And we are at the circular handrail. Okay, just stand by for the sun. Copy. We see the sun. Just wait a little bit more. Just uh, review and perform visual inspection of uh, uh, your orlans. Just make sure everything is fine and clean. All right, I don't see anything on your gloves. No. Residue or dirt? Actually, you have something on your shoulder, a tiny dark spot. Which side? On the left one? Yes. Well, I don't see it. Well, you won't. The legs are all clean, and the boots are also all clean, so the hands are as well. There is a little bit of dirt, something dark on your shoulder. It may be just some wear and tear on the suit. That's uh, normal. Okay. Clean your gloves. So clean your uh, the impact, um, the old impact, and do the jettisoning. We copy. All right, we are getting the towels out. EV2 has the towels out. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, having installed uh, the new impact tray of uh, micrometeoroid uh, debris witness plates on the uh, large diameter of the Zvezda service module, Sergei Rizhikov and Sergei Kudsverchkov are wiping down their suits and gloves with uh, some towels that they'll be jettisoning aft of the International Space Station, those towels posing no threat to recontact the orbital outpost. On the gloves, like some dust. Uh, and the towel gets some of it off, but not all of it. Face dust. All right, let me clean the handrail. Uh, 
Это черная краска, которую на That is on the handrails of the SM. Pretty characteristic there. Kind of floating away. All right, it just doesn't want to get off. The dark one, copy. should have moved from that long one. Oh, right, we are standing by for the sunrise. Artem, are we waiting for anything? So, have you cleaned up the dirt? Well, some of it. Давайте тогда еще подождем две минутки. All right. Let's um, wait for another couple of minutes. Sounds good. Пока примерьтесь к месту отталкивания. Just uh, place, uh, just select the right position to do the jettisoning. Make sure that there is nothing in the way of the towels. Well, there is this but the N unit that's installed here, but I'd say that, or but the I unit, but I'd say that it, it's doable. Uh, we'll probably have to position ourselves like a little bit. There was a short dropout in COM. And as far as I understand, the sun is out, right? The sun is out. We have um, identified the jettisoning vector. Just find the horizon and jettison it towards the horizon. Affirmative. All right, guys. Let's roll. We can potentially spot the horizon. And EV1 is ready. All right towards the horizon, 360 degrees. Both towels have been jettisoned successfully. And as you can see from uh, the helmet camera from Station Commander Sergei Ryzhikov, both towels used to wipe down the Orlan suits for Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov have now been jettisoned aft. They will uh, re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and disintegrate. Very little mass uh, to those towels and no uh, potential for recontact with the station. So that we could actually rotate the solar arrays and put them in the right positioning for for you, 
for you to be able to continue. And please do not continue towards the smaller diameter because we need to stand by till the solar arrays are in correct position. Copy. The solar arrays are exactly underneath us. Well, they're a little bit behind us. We see them. And we need to move a little bit down towards DC-1. Just where uh, your legs are. Our pointing. Well, solar rays should be towards, like, we, sh we sh would be turning them towards plane one. Okay, we copy. Okay, yes, it was in the way. Artyom, I'm next to handrail 2442. Copy. No, you're going to proceed? Uh, yes. Stand by. It's tricky here. I'm not in the way. Uh, no, you're not. You're fine. Okay. I guess we moved the batteries a bit early because I'm uh, touching them slightly. Второй. 
This is EV2. One of the hooks uh, is attached to the longitudinal handrail. Copy. Moving along the longitudinal handrail. And please wait for EV1, and then you will proceed with battery rotation. Copy. Okay, it got tangled up a bit right here. Sergey, uh, uh, please position yourself now while you're waiting. Yes, and next to the longitudinal handrail. And, and make sure that uh, you will be in a position that will allow you to monitor the uh, array rotation. Well, and you will have to um, move uh, over there and position yourself early to make sure that you are able to monitor the rotation of solar arrays. Sergey, I made room for you here. Copy. I do not see the solar arrays just yet, and I can see it now. The battery is that in the area of plane to copy. In the case of Sergey, one will be monitoring the area of plane four. Okay, copy. And stand by one. I need to attach one more hook. Guys, please keep translating uh, towards the MRM modules. I was just told that the solar arrays are feathered already. Uh, okay, so uh, we're going to keep translating. Uh, okay, yes, copy. I guess they were uh, feathered earlier. And we will need to move over towards the plane 2 area and move carefully here. Let me look around. There is a straightforward translation path to plane 3. Yes, that's correct, but there is some equipment on the handrail, right on the actual uh, handrail. Okay, uh, yes, I uh, copy that. I understand there is an adapter. This is Mission Control Houston approaching the six-hour mark into uh, today's spacewalk by Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov. They uh, have now installed uh, the witness plate called uh, the impact tray of experiments to measure micrometeoroid debris hits on the surface of the outside of the Russian segment of the International Space Station and uh, are taking a few closeout photos and uh, will be heading back to the Poisk module airlock soon to wrap up this spacewalk in which they repositioned a telemetry antenna uh, from the uh, Zvezda service module to Poisk, which is being employed today for the first time as an airlock for a Russian spacewalk. The uh, two crew members also retrieved and replaced uh, some material science experiment trays on the outside of the Russian segment.
but were unable to install a, a, flu a fluid uh, regulator system uh, into the uh, Zarya module to replace an older unit because they could not open up the cover uh, housing uh, the new uh, fluid flow regulator. That is not an impact to operations. Uh, the older unit is still uh, performing nicely with no issues. So the uh, new fluid flow regulator for the Zarya module will be installed at a later date. Something got tangled up here. So I got tangled up on the hook of the gap spanner. So let me check that. Sergey, uh, I think this is the uh, red tether that's going on uh, here. Do you see the red? It, it is attached to uh, to the lock. Yes. Thanks. The uh, Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow are going to have uh, the two spacewalkers uh, go back uh, just a few feet uh, onto the service module so that they can uh, reposition about 90 degrees an instrument that measures thruster plume impingement uh, on the surface of the Zvezda service module. That should uh, be the last task that they tackle uh, during today's spacewalk. Yes. Sergey, too, when you get a chance, could you please switch over your camera? What should I do to turn it off? Can you please turn it off and back on? Because we uh, are not getting the video from your camera. Okay, I uh, press on the button twice. And as far as the LED goes, let me check. I do not see it yet. I do not see the LED, so let me uh, try doing that again. Okay, and it's on now. Copy, thanks. And a good view of uh, the uh, center of attention today, the Poisk module, on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station, launched on November 10th, 2009. Adapter. This uh, module uh, that has served as a docking port for arriving Russian vehicles today received a second hat, that being uh, the ability to uh, support Russian spacewalks. The uh, crew uh, spent some time this morning depressurizing and repressurizing and checking hatch seals to make sure that Poisk uh, was uh, fit to support uh, spacewalk activity, it passed with flying colors and Poisk now in service in support of Russian spacewalks. Next year, the Russians uh, will be launching the multipurpose laboratory module called Nyoka, the Russian word for science, okay. that will be launched on a uh, proton rocket, a huge 22-ton module that uh, will serve several purposes, not only as a research laboratory, but also as a docking port and uh, a, an airlock that will replace the pier's docking compartment, which will be detached from the station and deorbited 
through a uh, Russian progress cargo ship to burn up in the Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. Okay, the shortcut handrail is behind me, correct? But I uh, should be translating towards... Again, uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov, uh, as we approach the six-hour mark in the uh, spacewalk, one more task for them, and that is the repositioning of a uh, thruster plume impingement uh, monitor on the Zvezda service module, after which uh, they will wrap up the spacewalk uh, by collecting their tools, checking the inventory, of items that they brought outside with them this morning, and then getting back inside Poise, closing the hatch and repressurizing uh, the airlock. The end of the Russian spacewalk will be measured at the point of hatch closure. And it will be at an angle. So, overall, well, there is a mechanical lock. Это при необходимости. Возможно, получится провернуть и без расфиксации. That used to be in custom, if necessary. Uh, maybe you will be able to rotate it without unfastening it. Yet. And uh, solar arrays are a good landmark for you now, and you will need to rotate uh, back at the O in the plane uh, towards the uh, solar arrays. And uh, also monitor the needle. Uh, it should be oriented and notable. Okay. So I just wanted to give you a reminder. Sergey, Sergey, one. Go ahead. Could you please check your OTAs? I think a wind knob uh, came off. Yes, I tried to put it back on. Let me try that again. Just stop for now, take a break, catch your breath, and we will continue after the break. Okay, it's back on. Copy. And you can rest for now? Okay. And then uh, we'll tell you when to proceed. Okay, we need to look around. What's more convenient here? I guess the seat should be oriented towards the box. Uh, EVA last time is six hours. Copy. Sergey, I made room for you here. Uh, yes, I see it.
Ребят, сейчас, в принципе, можно включить GoPro. Uh, guys, you can uh, turn on GoPro cameras and uh, you can keep them on uh, until the completion of the EVA. Copy. So we're almost back. Yes. Okay, I got that. So I guess I will need to move over there and up. Yes. Please move back. Okay, yes. EV1 inaudible. Moscow, this is Kate. Uh, I am in Pechao. How do you read me? Loud and clear? Okay, that's good.
Rizhikov and uh, could Sverchkov are back uh, at the uh, Poisk airlock hatchway. You see uh, the space station commander, Sergei Rizhikov, right at the hatchway from which uh, they exited uh, about six hours and eight minutes ago at the start of today's spacewalk. Uh, once inside, they'll close the hatch that will mark the official end of today's spacewalk in terms of elapsed time. We then uh, will wait for the uh, start of the repressurization of the Poisk airlock, again being used for the first time today, and we'll provide uh, some statistical information for you before we wrap up our coverage. This is EV-1. I am positioned next to Becadeo, and the same for EV-2. We are ready to proceed. Do you guys need to take a quick break to catch your breath? No, oh, so we're turning it now. Excellent. No. No, uh, please push a bit more. Okay, that's it. Uh, okay, and uh, I copied that you were the, the back of the war unit and its position. Yes, it's at approximately 45 degree angle. And the Ever is pointing towards the sun up, and Becado is parallel to uh, solar arrays. Poppy. And GoPro cameras are on. Could you please film it? And then you will go back. Okay, copy. And I'm filming it now. Guys, you will move over towards the hatch now and do not go back inside when you position yourself next to hatch edge. EV-1 should be prepared to go back inside first and then EV-2 will go second. After, before you go back in, uh, we're going to have to do equipment inventory. Copy. Rizhikov and could uh, Sverchkov being... Uh instructed by flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center to uh, take an inventory of their tools and other equipment they use during the course of today's spacewalk. Rizhikov uh, will be first inside, followed by uh, Kud Sverchkov, reversing the order in which they exited the Poisk airlock this morning. The uh, two uh, cosmonauts uh, completed uh, the uh, shakedown on the Poisk airlock uh, to be used for Russian spacewalks. Following uh, leak checks of the uh, Poisk airlock hatch uh, and as well as the uh, depressurization and repressurization of the uh, newly employed airlock, the uh, two cosmonauts were able to reposition an antenna cable uh, connecting uh, the piers docking compartment to the Zvezda service module. It was uh, repositioned uh, that now links the Poisk airlock to the Zvezda service module. This uh, sets the stage uh, for future work uh, that will decommission the piers docking compartment uh, for its uh, detachment and disposal next year prior to the launch of the multipurpose laboratory module as a brand new module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. 
The uh, two cosmonauts retrieved a uh, connector bracket uh, sample housing uh, material science experiments off of the uh, pier's docking compartment. Retrieved and replaced a uh, micrometeoroid uh, impact tray from uh, the large diameter area of the Zvezda service module. Took photos of uh, plume deflectors on the uh, Zvezda service module. Repositioned a plume impingement experiment uh, measuring thruster impingement on the uh, service module as well. The, uh, they did not have time to clean a window on the outside of the uh, service module and they were not able to replace a fluid uh, regulator device on the Zarya module because they were not able to open uh, the lid to the container in which uh, a brand new uh, fluid uh, regulator was housed. Those tasks uh, will be uh, rescheduled for a future spacewalk. If you want, you don't have to do that now. This is for EV2, and EV1 will proceed with positioning himself uh, inside the module. Uh, yes, that's what we were going to do. That was Sergey too. Ah, okay, uh, I copy that now. I apologize. To the first four hook should be left on the outer surface, on the external surface. Come again, uh, EV1 did not copy. So both hooks are outside of, no, uh, yes, until, until you uh, ingress, they should be outside. We had a short com drop out, guys. So the MLI on plate number nine is closed. Copy. You both uh, right now are at the edge of the EV hatch, correct? Yes, I'm at uh, handrail 61, which is next to, to the uh, hatch. Okay, let us do the inspection of the OTA attached hardware. Uh, okay, so EV2, first complete your translation and then report that you are there. EV1 is right before uh, the hatch and uh, I'm next to him, so we are not in the way of each other, so we can continue. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so we are checking the hardware. Yes, crew lock bag is in place. Crew lock bag, yes, it's in place. I confirm. Okay, so let's uh, first check what uh, EV1 has. OTA is OTA is there, right? Yes, check. Swing arm. Swing arm. Check. Yes, it's in place. Tool carry. There. Trash bag. Trash bag. There. Check. Wrench uh, with the uh, wing nut wrench and red. Yes, all three are there. Cutter. Yes, it is there. Check. 
Glitter с ретом. Glitter camera with the red tether. Glitter с ретом на месте. Yes, uh, they are here. Один свободный small small. One small small uh, red tether is free. Yeah. Available? Yes. One available yeah. tether. Large, small. And there is also the uh, large small, also free, and it, it is connected to the housing of the impact. Okay. Then, Sergey, please look at uh, operator two, at Sergey two, and we will do the inspection with them. OTA, Sergey two? Yes, I have it. Swing arm. I have it. Tool caddy. Come, come again. Yes, tool caddy yes, is in place. Okay, so the wretched wrench with wing nut wrench and red. There, all three items. Check. Copy. Glitter camera with the red. Tether? Small, small, red. Yes. I have it. One free small, small red and not attached. Yes, one unattached uh, and one large small. Everything is in place. Thank you so much. So EV1, you ingress first and EV2 will follow you. Copy in work. Okay, the short uh, hook is inside. The swing arm is in the way. Uh -huh. uh, get snagged. Now this is good. Excellent. EV1 is inside. And uh, Rizhikov now back inside the Poisk module. Camera module. The EV2 has started moving in. At the end of the day, uh, the two cosmonauts uh, completed everything except the replacement of that fluid flow regulator for the Zarya module. No impact to Russian operations, however. That task uh, will be deferred to a future spacewalk, as well as the uh, cleaning of one of the windows on the outside of the service module. All of the other tasks were completed, including uh, the validation of the Poisk airlock, most importantly, uh, as a new airlock to be used for future Russian spacewalks. And uh, the uh, disconnection and reconnection of an antenna cable that now links uh, the Poisk module to the Zvezda service module for telemetry for future spacewalks. Yeah, you know, my tether got snagged. Copy. Airtight container.
Sergey, your feet are touching the cables. Try to uh, move your feet a little bit. Bend your knees. Yeah. Is it okay now? Yes, it is better. That's excellent. The view from uh, Sergey Ryzhikov's helmet camera. He is uh, halfway inside the uh, Poisk airlock, looking at uh, his spacewalking crewmate, Sergey Kud Sverchkov. Both cosmonauts completing the first spacewalks of their careers. The 232nd spacewalk in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades. Okay, so your watch uh, is moving on your wrist. And here we have to deal with impact, right? Yes, that's correct. The impact is unintelligible. We need to get the bug first. Where is it? So, impact is secured with a hook to the handrail. I am unfastening it from the red right now. Copy. And red is secured to the cover, and we think that uh, it is sufficient. You know, I am having the bag. I am holding it. It is, it is prepared in principle. Now we have to, to put the impact tray there. Be careful with the hook. Yes, it is ready. No, not not ready yet. There is wire tie here, so I have to unfasten it. Uh, it is to that. It is secured to to that one. Yes, that's correct. All right now, I am putting the impact inside the bag. Push it a little bit more. You know, I flew away a little bit. Stand by one. Let me position myself better. Unintelligible. You know, the it is narrow, this bag. The opening is not sufficiently wide. Okay, it is almost there. Now let me uh, adjust the latch because it's snagged on the white eye here. Copy. Now remove the hook. Yes, of course, uh, you, you can do it now. It is secure inside. It is done. Copy. I remove the hook. I'm holding it. Now pull, pull the the cord. Yes, it is tight now. The bag. We are watching it, guys. Sergey, first, second. Sergey, one and two. Go ahead, Artem. 
When you are ready to remove the protective ring, please deactivate the sublimator. And then after that, you will deal with the protective ring. Okay, so it is EV2. Do I have to ingress? Yes, it's a go. You can ingress now. If you are done with everything, you can ingress. EV1 and EV2, EV2 you can ingress. Before the protective ring activity, you will need, you know, 407 connectors. Uh, you have to tow them to KBO. Bag. All right. So before before the protective ring installation, after the ingress, yes, you will have to do it after the ingress. Okay. So the hook from crew lock bag now is uh, transferred inside. I'm taking it inside. KBO bag is uh, ready. Prologue back is inside also, already. So after I have my short um, tether inside, uh, can I demate Krulog back from my tether? Once the hook of the equipment tether is in secured inside the MRM, yes, then of course you can do it. Prologue bag is secured inside MRM2 on the uh, circular handrail. In that case, yes, you can release your tether. I also can actually use the second can they made the second uh, hook from impact. There is no need for that. EV2. Okay, copy. So I demated, unhooked the external hook of the from the crew lock bag. It's my short short tether. And I am going to ingress. So we will need the crew uh, lock bag in order to work with the connector unit. Okay. You know, my uh, cartridge um, is coming to the limit. You know, it, this is due to the time that you have spent uh, in your space space suit. Yes, I understand. EV2 is inside. Copy. We are watching it from uh, EV1 camera. I am moving. Both crew members, uh, Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov, now back inside the Poisk module airlock. And uh, we'll be standing by for the uh, hatch to be closed to mark the official end of today's spacewalk. Tether. The long uh, tether is rehooked to the handrail inside the MRM2 module, and the second uh, EV operator is fully inside. I have ingress in full. Copy. I'm ready with the bag. Okay, I'm working with the crew lock bag now. The crew lock bag is open. Uh, 
SMP. So the SNP 407 connector assembly is here, uh, so I am closing the call log back. Unintelligible. Okay, let me retrieve the red. Yes, I can see it. Ten by one. Okay, so we are in a clip right now. Copy. So the SNP 407 is in the bag. It is towed there. Copy. Then you can deactivate the sublimators. First, you will proceed to the removal of the protective ring. Yes. The T2 switch to, to control temperature control switch should be in position three, guys. Okay, in order to deactivate the sublimators, we need uh, to uh, put the temperature switch to four. Actually, you know, it is three. Uh, position three is better for drying out. Okay, position three will do. Okay, so the EV1 sublimator is deactivated. Copy. And the uh, ISTR, uh, the source system can be deactivated too. The ISTR switch uh, can be deactivated let let me help you yeah i need first to deactivate my sublimator okay but could you lower the arm a little bit because it is in the way copy Something uh, is impeding, something in between there. Moments away uh, from the uh, closing of the hatch to the Poisk module to complete uh, today's spacewalk, a good view of Sergei Ryzhikov from the helmet camera of Sergei Kud Sverchkov, the two cosmonauts wrapping up the first spacewalks of their respective careers. In the lower end, no. Unintelligible. Uh, you you move out back from me, okay? No. Somehow it is. Only goes only halfway. Maybe you should uh, first. Press it and then the, the sublimator indicator is pressed. Yes, copy. So can you see drying of the toe on your display? Yes, 2.5. Yes, and inaudible for the EV2. Copy. You know, uh, the drying no, uh, norm or OK should uh, appear earlier than 10 minutes or after 10 minutes. You will see. OK, so we are starting the removal of the protective ring, guys. It's a go. Copy. In work. We haven't removed the hook here yet. Okay, so let us push it away from here. 
You know, it is secured there, this hook, yes. So you, you can try to push it back. Yeah, of course, it is hooked. Yes, it is hooked. All right, so, you know, but then the tether will be right across the whole airlock. So I will unhook it first. Okay. Yeah, this is an optimal decision. Yes, because we won't have to reach uh, there that far away. You hook on the hook and uh, sitting on, on it is the third hook, so to say. Yes, I am holding it. I got it. All right, I will move out from here a little bit farther away. I'm turning here, changing my position. Here. What is your temperature switch position in position three? Yes, I put it in position three. It should be. I cannot tell you right now, but, you know, it is already drying for four minutes. Copy. And mine is drying for six minutes. It's easy one. Copy. Unintelligible. Guys, how are things? How are you doing? Everything is fine. We're standing by for your go. But I've already told you. Have you removed the protective ring? Not yet. We are doing it now. I moved the flag. Uh, we are doing it. So the EV2. The uh, removal of that protective ring. Uh, reverses uh, the order of uh, the work that was done at the beginning of today's spacewalk after the opening of the hatch to the piers to the Poisk module, the new airlock being employed for the first time today by uh, Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov, that uh, protective ring uh, preventing any uh, orbital debris from striking uh, the edge of the seals uh, to the airlock hatch. It is ready. 
So the protective ring is removed, and we are stored behind the 6113 handrail. Now you can also remove uh, the adjustable tether box, but leave, leave uh, the hatch in the open position until the activity with sublimators. Okay, the hook is removed. We copy all. Copy. The rubber seals on my side are all good from 8 to 1. That's what I can see if uh, we use the face of the clock allegory. Okay, copy. The tail drying is normal for uh, ED1, 9 minutes. Eight seconds is the time of the drying. Guys, we have a recommendation. If after you close the hatch, we have comb drop out, you will have to mate the electrical umbilical. What you will do? We are standing by for the LED indicator that everything is nominal, and we are standing by for the timer. I see. Ten minutes is up. Ten zero two. And um, the is normal. And we are ready to proceed. And Sergey, I don't see clearly. Was there repress? The handle is in place, in the correct position, and I'm starting the rotation. This view from a balcony camera overlooking the Russian Mission Control Center on the outskirts of Moscow as uh, Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov are about to close the hatch to the Poisk module airlock, its use uh, having been uh, perfectly successful in its debut as an airlock to support Russian spacewalks. 
standing by for the hatch closure that will stop the clock on today's spacewalk. All right, I need to adjust here. Unintelligible. Was there a click? No, no, I haven't heard it. Me neither. Okay, and now we have the click. So the roller should be in position closed. They all are in position closed. Thank you, and I'm removing the handle. So you were outside for six hours, 47 minutes. Congratulations on your first CVA. Thank you so much for your work, and we are standing by for the end of the repress. And I am handing over the floor to Dima. And thank you. Thank you so much, Artyom. Thank you for your support. And I'll talk to you tomorrow, guys. Talk to you tomorrow. Thank you. Hey. Do you see an intelligible? They are right next to me. Okay, it's caught on something. Hold on. Sergey, one. Sergey, two. This is Mitri. More repressed. Please prep the cue cards. Cue card nine. Copy cue card nine. And just uh, put yourself in the correct position. And we are connecting the electrical umbilical. Сергей, please open step three. So this is going to be repressed up to 60 millimeters. What cue card are you talking about? It's cue card 10. It's going to be MRM2 repressed to 260 millimeters from Pehel. Did he say 10? No, no, no. I just misheard that. The hatch is closed uh, to the uh, Poisk airlock. We're just waiting for confirmation on an official time for that hatch closure, which will uh, denote uh, the exact elapsed time of today's spacewalk. All right, so Q card 10 is open. Step three, we are monitoring KSD valve two in position closed. KSD DC one in position closed. So, uh, Pov panel is on. As the DC1 open is not illuminated. And on your go, I am ready to open the PHOSU valve. We have a go, send the command. Do you, have, do you give us the go? Yes, you have a go. And I confirm the LED is illuminated, and we are starting the timer. Copy. The timer has been started, and MRM2 pressure is increasing. Current pressure is 20 millimeters. Just uh, give us quite as a running commentary. Um, every time the pressure increases up to like 20, 30 millimeters. 3.2 is uh, for EVE2. MRM pressure is...
трудоограничен. А Сергей один. Сергей. Вот это прессор. 2.3. MRM 2 pressure is 115, 0.22 and 0.23 are pressures in the suit. Once you reach pressure 2.6.0, we will be closing the Cavade valve. We copy. MRM 2 pressure 160 and the timer is um, 2 minutes. And UDSK is 0 0.16. And Sergey, what's the pressure in MRM 2 and in the suit? MRM2 pressure is 180, suit 1, 0, 12, and 0, 13, uh, pressure for suit 1 and suit 2. Sergei, let's turn off U.S. cameras. Just push the button to turn them off. EV1 has his camera off. EV2 has his cam camera off. Copy. MRM2 pressure is 220, EV1 suit is 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 are the pressures in suit 1 and suit 2 correspondingly. Copy. Two three five is the pressure in MRM two. Three and a half minutes. Принято. Ну если скрипрэша будет в районе нуля, можно будет макаронный инжектор да там ноль ноль пяти ноль ноль шести и отключить. Well, if the pressure is um, getting close to zeros in the suit. You can use the injector uh, for um, the suits to bring to have them at 0 0.06, 0 0.05. Well, currently it's 0 0.04. And pressure is an intelligible uh, copy and copy and at pressure of 260. Don't forget to close. I'm, I'll be ready. Uh, in five millimeters, we'll be closing the cover de pahel hatch. Oh, valve correction. 260 is the MRM2 pressure. And I am closing the cover de valve. And I confirm the LED is no longer illuminated. And enabled is no longer there. What's the MV pressure in MRM2? At the beginning, uh, when you were equalizing the pressure. Stand by, let me uh, place myself a little bit more comfortably. 260 is the MRM2 pressure on MV. Okay, now you can move on to cue card 11, step 5, transition to onboard power supply, and you can start working per the step. Copy, cue card 11, step 5. I am monitoring uh, total pressure in O2 tanks. And on the POV panel, please put the um, switch to beta 1 and beta 2. First tank is 40, second 290, 
copy. Third is 280. Copy. Well, it's definitely more than 150. Shall we continue? And in the fourth one, it's unintelligible 60. And I'm... Okay, I have O2 open. Repress, purge, Orlan 1 and 2. No. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we now have uh, confirmation on the official end time to today's spacewalk by Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kud Sverchkov. The uh, spacewalk coming to an end with hatch closure on the Poisk module airlock at 4 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The elapsed time of the spacewalk, six hours, 48 minutes. We'll have other statistical information for you momentarily. Guys, if it's getting difficult. In addition, uh, the uh, Poisk airlock is being repressurized at this hour. No problems uh, with that. And again, uh, the spacewalk ending at 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern time for an elapsed time of 6 hours, 48 minutes. Valve open, but it's it closes. Same issue here. Unintelligible. Let's try. Okay. Let's try to just do it to each other. There. Is there anything over my shoulder? Is it pull? Is there anything pulling there? Um, maybe the shorts. Tether. All right. O2. Monitoring. Sergey, come again. So we see, we now see the message. O2 monitoring, and we see that uh, the, uh, we have the umbilical connected fluid, umbilical connected for suit one, working on the second one. Other way around, away from me. Like this, right? Yes. Those messages that come up. It just. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, once again, uh, Sergey Ryzhikov and Sergey Kud Sverchkov back inside the Poisk module uh, where they inaugurated its use as a uh, spacewalking airlock today and uh, began the process of. Uh, De decommissioning the piers docking compartment, which has been used up to this point over the past 19 years as an airlock for Russian spacewalks. This was the 232nd spacewalk in support of ISS assembly maintenance and upgrades. The eighth spacewalk staged this year out of the International Space Station and again the first spacewalk conducted out of Poisk. The uh, spacewalk began at 9.12 a.m. Central Time, 10.12 a.m. Eastern Time, with the opening of the hatch to the Poisk module, and ended at 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, with the hatch closure. 
And an elapsed time of six hours, 48 minutes for today's spacewalk, the first for Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov. In all, the 232 spacewalks conducted uh, since the inauguration of spacewalks out of the International Space Station in 1998 have uh, resulted in 1,458 hours and 51 minutes of spacewalks, or the equivalent of 60 days, 18 hours and 51 minutes of spacewalking time. This was the uh, first spacewalk uh, for Expedition 64. More spacewalks for this increment are planned in the uh, weeks and months ahead. Sergey, yours is a little bit lower. Yep. Let me let me get it, give it to you so that I don't have to hunt it down later. So with the completion of today's spacewalk and the repressurization of the Poisk module underway, that will wrap up our coverage for today. Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov, uh, part of what is now a seven-person crew on board the International Space Station. They will uh, complete uh, the repressurization of Poisk, open up the hatch, as will Kate Rubens on the station side of the uh, Poisk service module interface, and uh, the crew will get uh, some well-deserved rest for the end of the evening. So with that, uh, we'll complete our coverage for today, the spacewalk by Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov, now at an end, six hours and 48 minutes. Enjoy your evening. Keep following the uh, exploits of Expedition 64 in the International Space Station on the web at uh, www.nasa.gov slash station. Have a good evening. This is Mission Control Houston. Four, two,